Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the first ever episode 19 of Expansion Drive Podcast, your weekly source for all things nerdy, whether it be some video games, theme parks, movies, TV, comics, wrestling, anything else? I don't know. My mic sounding nice, <laughs> checking <laughs> one. As always, I am your, your host, Mike Kerrigan, uh, with my favorite worst producer ever. Yeah. Mr. Didi. My mic sounds nice. Check two. <laughs> How's everyone doing? And in our third and fourth rotating chair this week, to my right, Ms. Brittany Tuttle. What's up? What's up? And to the left, Mr. Banks Lee. Hello. I am hyped to be here. Yeah, get I'm hyped. I'm so get hyped, hyped to be hyped. here. Get hyped. Get hyped. Do you, you know that's like a trending thing like for the uh, Twitter universe now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, make us uh, verify us. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> With uh, our... Do we uh, sign up news. to do that. We break so- news. With our hundred followers, yes. <laughs> hey, like that. hey, those hundred followers can make a difference. Oh yeah, my mic sounds nice. Check three. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> um, so um, usually right around now. Um, oh, well, first, actually, let me get into uh, some housekeeping. So first of all, if you would like to support the show and all the other shows right here on Tracks Magazine, uh, YouTube and podcast uh, form, um, you can go to attractsmagazine.com, click on the shop, and then there's a little t-shirt button on there, and you can uh, purchase some awesome items like this uh, Expansion Drive t-shirt. Uh, maybe they have some mugs. Uh, you can purchase some... Uh, what, what, uh, Early Night I was like, you can promote your show, Brittany. Come on. The number one theme park Early live stream Night in the, the world. number one theme park live stream in the world starring me. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That, that was a, I, I don't that even was know line. if I said actually, actual words. I, I think I, I said it. I need glasses. I need some sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. right about now. sunglasses. Um, and then you have uh, uh, Blue Sky Beauty with uh, Tori Fox uh, from mm-hmm. the show. Sadly not here today. And then uh, we have um, Roy Meets World. Banks, what do you do? Well, there's the show. Oh, well, oh, I'm right. getting there. The, one and old, yeah, yeah. the original show, the one that started no, all of this. No, 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 no. The OG <laughs> show. <laughs> His mic isn't sounding nice. Checking <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Banks, you yeah. just had some uh, big news on the show, what, like Ooh, two or three weeks ago. I did. So, uh, in case you don't watch the show, I'm pretty sure you do watch the show if you listen to us. Mm. Um, Banks, you had a big announcement. What was that announcement? Go ahead and tell the, few, the folks at home. Uh, our little family of three is turning into a family of four. Yeah. Hey, get hype. Get hey, Got a little one hype. coming. Looks uh, late Woo. April, early May. Um, you mean so. triplets, right? Oh. <sighs> Boy. When are you supposed to Wait, find are you serious? out we, what it is? We don't know. Oh. It's still too early. It's still early. <laughs> it's like, I think she's about eight or nine weeks at this point. So but, uh, are we going to do a pool? Like oh, a, okay. I think we should do a pool. Do a pool? I definitely want to do a gender reveal on the show in a unique way. Uh, stay tuned in the future for that. That'd so. be cool. Ooh, that would be mm. fun. Um, you want to take bets on what it's going to be now? Yeah. Mm. A dollar bet. Throw it down. Throw it down. Okay. I'd have to see. I'd have to see Spencer first. Or uh, Sydney with first, I mean. Okay. Oh, to see if she said high or low? Yeah. Mm. My, wait, wait, does I, that make a difference? Yes. Dude, my dad, um, he was never ever wrong. He he, he was like, uh, girl, and he was right like every single time. I'd never seen the man mm. be be wrong. Well, what about this whole gimmick of the sitting thing? Like, I don't get it. If the belly yeah, sits it's, high, I think it's a girl. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Low, yeah. it's a boy. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So next time you see your wifey, I'll think about that. Think <laughs> about that. Um, actually, let me, let me get into more some housekeeping. I forgot. Uh, so we also started doing some more uh, Twitch stuff. Uh, so Destiny 2 dropped last week. Uh, I think I streamed for three Ooh. hours the other day. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Great time. Uh, had a, a few people show up. So thank you for those who are watching. Again, it's on Twitch t- twitch.tv slash expansion drive. Um, of course, we haven't been able to do it lately because of uh, some storm that came through i think um but something, that happened some, some, something like that it's a little dr- light I drizzle i think um <laughs> also evacuated <laughs> <laughs> um also uh we wanted to thank a uh, sponsor of the show mei travel uh yes. so there's mei travel.com mm-hmm. mouse fan travel.com and what? universal fan travel.com oh my god they are your source for cruises yep uh disney and and universal oh my god uh so right now they also have Didi. what's that special they got on the cruises Bro. <laughs> pre Paid gratuities. Here we go. <laughs> Get hype. <laughs> Get hype, cruise. I, Coming. I don't I don't know what else. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm still waiting on the expansion drive girls cruise featuring me. Listen, it's, it's, no, it's, no, it's no longer bro cruise. It, it's just the Get Hype Cruise. The Get Hype it's, Cruise. It's everybody's, bro everybody's cruise in my heart. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> so maybe we'll just go by ourselves then, D. Fine. Fine. We'll be like, all right. Um, but yes, if you want a free quote to whether it be the cruises, Universal or Disney, they can help you out with anything. Just uh, contact them at meowtravel.com, universalfantravel.com, and mousefantravel.com. They'll help you out yes. with all your needs. And the love free, you, prepaid gratuities. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> you have 
Guys, I'm telling you, I work in the tipping industry. That's major. (laughs) That's that's huge. He's gonna cry. I I want to cry right now. Produce tears. (laughs) Can I work for whatever company they are gonna be giving the gratuities to, (laughs) knowing that I'm gonna get paid? Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean. I'm gonna go work for Royal Caribbean. (laughs) Um, usually right around now is uh, when we go around the table and talk about uh, what's going on Uh, I know a lot of us are going to have that same uh, answer Um, Banks you haven't been on the show for a little while since like week three something like that yeah I was just briefly on that one yeah Uh, Banks what's going on with you besides you know being pregnant again (laughs) yes uh, Banks is pregnant yes it is me that is carrying this time when you're saying that your family's pregnant usually you're saying like hey I'm pregnant you know type deal so I get you I get you um no, it's just uh, working full time, getting the show going every week, um, doing all that fun stuff, and then of course, you know, you know, hunkering down this past weekend <laughs> with uh, the whole Irma situation that went through here. Honestly, it was my first time um, really ever experiencing a major hurricane. I've been li- I've been living in Florida since two thousand seven. Oh, so you weren't here in 04. I wasn't here in 04 or 06 uh, when the, they had hurricanes coming through. Really? I think there was some in 06. I think there was. I think 06 was Charlie. No, no, no that was 04. Wait, wait okay. a minute. Was was 06 Wilma? 06 was Wilma. I think that's what it because was. Because we had because we had the triple pack where I was out of school for like three weeks. Yeah, that was fun. But it was interesting mm-hmm. um, being you know having the eye and the eye wall pass over your house. Yeah, and that was the craziest thing is hearing these you know deafening winds and all of a sudden dead silence. Mm-hmm. It was like really? I've never heard anything like that in my life. That was crazy. So, oh my god! When so I'm a little bit further south from where you are, but yeah. seriously, like you're directly north. So I, so I knew once it passed over us, it was going to you. But like right around, say like nine o'clock is when the winds really started to pick yeah. up for me. And uh, I think like right around ten thirty or so, that's when I told Froka and the kids, I'm like, all right, let's go. We got to get out of the living room because the winds were in the living room, just like banging directly across it. I put my hand on the window and you feel like the window like bellow Ooh. in a little bit. I'm like, oh, eh, I'm, oh I'm not so sure about this one. So let, let's let's go. So um, we we were out in the matter of fact we were in the kids' bedroom because the back window didn't have any wind whatsoever. So like but, all right, we're good back here. But real quick, is then the kids have the uh, the, uh, the storm door? Yeah, door? yeah. But there was no wind back there whatsoever. There was no wind. What? Oh, because yeah. I think the wind was coming from the south. I think the wind was coming. I think it was the south and the east. Right? It was going southwest. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Oh, okay. Um, because it was like. I'm pretty sure that's how I face. I'm pretty sure that's how it was. Anyway, so it, anyway, whatever sorry. it was, it was hitting my my front room windows. Wow, that's crazy. Um, in the back room, like where the the kids' bedroom is, uh, they're in the master bedroom, and they have the storm door, but it's that double pane deal or whatever. Oh, so yeah, it was barely yeah. moving at all. The wind, like I said, wasn't really you know bad back there. Um, but once the eye got there, I've never been scared about a storm before. Never, never once. Yeah, I was legit scared. Are you serious? Like, I was, I, I was yeah, That's that's Not like a. Scared. So we so living in Apopka, well, well, when I used to, uh, I was staying at my parents' house, and we'd gone through the the, the triple shot, and we went through Wilma, and mm. then you know I've gone through all these hurricanes. My dad was like, "Oh, it's gonna be nothing. We ain't, we ain't, you know, whatever. We're gonna mm. stick around." Uh, my dad was deathly terrified. Yeah. He's like, uh, "You're coming home," and I'm like, "Pop, it's gonna be okay." He's like, "You're coming home. We're gonna get a hotel room." So we get to the we get to my house. And my dad's like, should we still go to the hotel room? Because that's when it went west or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like west. Yeah. So, my dad, so we're like, I'm like, Pop, it's going to be fine. We're going to be good. We have power. There's a fire station right down the street. We're fine. And my dad's like, fine, we'll do it. Next thing you know, what? I'm not even kidding. Like two hours later, oh, the storm's moving back east. Yep. <laughs> and, and that was and my dad's like, what? And that's that when... literally happened to me, though, because yeah. I, um, I decided to evacuate Orlando on Friday. And uh, my boyfriend and I left. Friday morning, went to Tampa because it was supposed to pass over <gasps> Orlando Get because out. his parents lived there and they had supplies and water and a backup generator of power their entire house. So we felt safe. And they were in Lutz, Florida, not like Tampa, Tampa, but like a suburb of Tampa. Yeah, so yeah. We, they were far enough inland that we were going to be fine. We wouldn't have to worry about flooding or anything. And then the storm moved like it was going to pass straight over Tampa. So oh, we yeah, then right. left. And that was f- that was what Thursday? No, Friday morning. The, yeah, no, or was, Sunday, Sunday morning. It was, yeah. Yeah. As I was getting ready to hit the it keys. It was like late was go Saturday to night was when they had said that the path had changed. So we got up Saturday morning and drove to Jacksonville. What the world? That's crazy. What? And we had to evacuate again. Yeah. Went to Jacksonville to stay with his sister and her boyfriend, and then came back Monday morning to Orlando because the storm then moved back over Orlando, away from Tampa. So what it was wild. In the wor- I had like a road trip, so family vacation with my boyfriend's family, who I had never met before. 
Oh, you're, yes, well, there you go. Now you're getting so. married next week. So, <laughs> uh, so how long did it take you to get to Tampa? An hour and 45 minutes. How long did it take you to get to Jacksonville? Because it should be about, about three hours. Was there traffic? That's like, I'll say that's a lot better we, than I thought it was going to we be. We were yeah. very, very lucky and did not hit much traffic at wow. all. Yeah. We took back roads like 301. and I'd say probably everybody's gone like by then that. too. Yeah. Yeah. The only issues that we have were coming back to Tampa from Jacksonville where there were just like the roads were flooded. We had to drive through at least a foot of water a few times. It was there were trees down. We didn't see any destroyed houses, but there were trees down everywhere. A lot of the stoplights didn't work and no one knows how to handle those oh when they god. go out. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it was just oh my god, I had never been so scared. Like I knew that I was gonna be fine where I was at, but the fact that we went to Tampa thinking it was going to be safe. And then not even 24 hours later, having to pick up and leave again. Yeah. It was terrifying. Well, and that, and that's what was wild, because originally it was going to come skirt the, bless, bless you. Bless you. Uh, Take it. It was going to come up the East Coast. Yeah. And then it switched, you know, so, so Saturday night, Sunday morning, or whatever it was, and then it was going to go to Tampa. Yeah. And I said to Frog, and she's like, should we board up? I'm like, I don't think so. I think we're far enough yeah. away from Tampa that we, we're not going to have bad winds, but nothing going to be horrible or mm -hmm. whatever. And then that's when I'm, I'm watching, kid you not, so on um, Dennis Phillips in Tampa, he's the weather guy over there on ABC, and uh, he's the dude that wears the suspenders like for everything. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys see it at all, ever because of being in Orlando. But he, I think it was like noon or so. He's like, I don't think it's going to do this. Like all the weather reports are saying that it's going to go, you ski the wrong us or whatever, but I think it's going to go directly north. I'm like, huh. That, that, that'll that put it right over our house. Sure enough, you just see that path just going north, north. Yeah. As soon as it yeah. made landfall at Marco Island, it decided, I don't want to go to Tampa, yeah. I'm going to go north. And yeah. once they said that that eye was like coming directly over our house, I'm like, this mm -hmm. this is getting for real. Like, mm -hmm. I should have boarded up, but, you know, of course, it's yes. too late now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What and are we going to do? I was getting scared, too, because they said it was going to affect Champions Gate, which is where I live, yeah. and yeah. I left my car here, like... Yeah, I it, just got I parked the hell downtown. Out of Dodge. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just dipped. And that's yeah. what we were trying to decide what we were going to do. Because, like, we have carports over our house. Like, it's it's not a garage or anything. It's just, a, like, a little aluminum carports. Like, and that thing collapses so, and you're done. So, what like, are we going to do? It's like, you know what, Fraga, I don't care. We have full coverage. So, either way, we're going to be covered. For, you know, whatever happens. Something, even yeah. if something does, you know, we'll, we'll get it covered or whatever. And uh, knock on wood, um, we didn't lose power. It, 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 that's good. It, it's wild. I couldn't believe it because you know usually like if just like <laughs> a couple drizzles come through, oh, we lost power. Crap. Um, it flickered a couple different times. Yeah. So like I was watching the news from YouTube and then just streaming it from my Chromecast. Yeah. Um, so like I would lose the signal for the news every once in a while. But like we really didn't lose power. We woke up that morning and you know there was a bunch of the tree that's in front of us. Um, big branches came off and it, a couple of them hit the car, but no scratches or anything like that. Um. Some of the carports around the the area oh my God. were straight up lifted off and Ooh. then like tumbled over other cars. Like my mom's car, I think hers is like scratched the hell because of how the, the thing came off. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the trees, like the, the big ones, like oak tree type deals are in the middle of the, the street. And, like, so like, we made it out pretty good. Um, everyone around us doesn't have power. Like what? We, yeah, it's crazy. We we drove around yesterday because we we were exhausted. We didn't want to cook dinner last night. Mm -hmm. So like, all right, let's see what we can find somewhere. I think uh, talk. I think Taco Bell's open. Let's go over there. So we drove to Taco Bell. Not open. No, it was open, but it's seriously like the only like block in the whole entire town that actually had power besides us. Everyone and their mother was trying to go to Taco Bell. I went to Waffle House over <laughs> by Disney Springs. How long did you wait? <laughs> Uh, 20 minutes. Oh, that's not that's bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had a generator outside that's and were serving grilled cheese and burgers. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. That's good. Um, and in Disney, it doesn't look like they got hit you know, too bad. Like We were just looking at pictures of uh, Blizzard Beach. Um, they got hit pretty good. It seemed yeah. like a couple of things at it Magic seemed, Kingdom got Magic got Kingdom hit. got oh, what, what wrecked a little bit. Well, well, I heard about rumors that Jungle Cruise got hit. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like really plants and stuff there, so um, I'm not surprised. But you want to say what you what you're telling me? Brittany? Yeah, if you go on Twitter, uh, you can see pictures of the Pet Cemetery at Haunted Mansion, which was virtually just like wrecked, what destroyed. Yeah, yeah, no um, way. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Mr. Get Toad still standing Mr. there? Mr. Toad is still standing. <laughs> yeah. I love that the one, the one that's still standing. You can't destroy that thing. <laughs> and did did but you like, see? Oh. It was like the dirt had just been pulled out from underneath. That's wow. Crazy. It was just... It's like Mr. Toad isn't going back to hell. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, not again. And did you, you see the photos once. of the billboard? No, what billboard? There's a billboard somewhere in town that had all the advertisements ripped off of it, and it went down to like an advertisement for the brand new Stitch's Great Escape attraction at Magic Kingdom. What? Beautiful. I saw that like, All the layers got peeled off all the way down to Stitch's Great Escape. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. That's God. beautiful. When did that open? Oh, 2004. Oh, my God. Right after 
you think they wouldn't like keep putting stickers and, and you know whatnot over top of them, right? You take them off. <laughs> they, just take them off. I, I guess it's quicker just to put them <laughs> on the top. It's the people yeah. that like on the license pl- or the license plate, they just put the sticker over top, over top, yep, over yep. top, over top until it's like this huge layer. I do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Until they send you a new one, you're yeah, like, all right, I'm good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm happy everyone was safe. Yeah, and that's everyone, everyone safe. suffered very minimal damage. There's still, like. of course, today you know we're filming this uh, Tuesday afternoon, and there's still a lot of people in the area that do not have power. A yeah, bunch of our friends, friends yeah, they yeah. still doesn't have power. Yeah. They're they're so waiting. They're dying. It's like I feel bad. It's like you know I, I've offered you know if anybody wants to come to my place, they're more than welcome. You know, we don't have a big place by any means, but um, you know, got plenty of water. Yeah. We can snuggle. It's fine. Yeah. You hey now! <laughs> you got power at your place, right? Yeah, I have power at my place. That's crazy with all the the trees and whatnot that are over there. I'm. Sh- that's what I was concerned about because uh, curfew was at six p.m. Yeah, and so uh, while I was helping my dad, um, my sister and I helped my dad clean the yard because we had a tree fall on the house. By the way, when you said you had a tree fall in the house, I thought it was like this big old tree. Hey. Dude, it's like this tiny little branch that hit the side of the wall. I'm like, oh, come on. I was so scared for a second. And then I look, oh, come Listen, on. It's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> it fell on the house. But the cleanup was a pain in the butt because yeah. all these branches and then like both our neighbors' fences fell over. That sucked. Yeah. And so we had a clean up. And uh, so the curfew was at six. And I'm like, Pop, I really need to get back to the house. He's like, well, I don't want you to get arrested because there's reports of people getting arrested if there you're were out before yeah. the review. Yeah. And so as soon as I got home, I'm like, I'm like freaking out because I had to go downtown to grab my car. Which downtown, oh my gosh, Pine Street was annihilated. Like signs were just all over the places. All the trees downtown that were standing up, up bent over. It was downtown's a wreck. Oh my gosh. Mm. But anyway, um, so I get to my house and I find that no trees were over, but like my entire parking lot is filled with branches and leaves yeah. and and it did flood over there oh. so thank god i didn't park i say there. well thank god you're on the second floor too yo gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah man that storm sucked it, it was, yeah i uh, did glad it's over oh uh, but yeah. no one no, jose. jose yeah <laughs> no oh, way no jose. jose no way jose. yeah that's crazy i told him my dad's like well it was, it was fun that you're here and i was like i might see you next week so yeah, exactly. you, know. it, you, you saw the path that's going through and that's going to make it's this like really a loop. loop and then like oh oh yeah just stay in that warm water for even longer thanks buddy so we're gonna get finally the sci-fi movie's gonna come true category six we almost Remember got that a six oh they're gonna talk about shark yeah, yeah. Well, that would have been. I was prepared. Cool. I was well, prepared hey, Miami, to cheer on for the Sharknado. <laughs> well, Miami had a Sharknado. Did you see that shark that was swimming down I seventy five in Miami? There's a video of a shark. Is that was... fake though? I think I've seen video of a, every time is. a hurricane hits. I see a video of a shark swimming down that they say yeah. is from yeah. the hurricane. Just like the I all right. So the, the one that's going around Facebook right now is that face that you know is coming from Irma. Yeah, it's like that I evil that. you know, devil yeah. face. I'm like, come on, people, you really believe this? Come well, on. did yeah. you see someone edited? I think the War, War of Worlds. Oh, like, yeah, creature yeah, yeah. The, that the really freaked thing. me out. I was just like, oh my gosh. Just give it the flu. Real. It's fine. <laughs> oh, spoilers oh, if you've never seen War of the World. Sorry. No, apologies. it was the common cold. Well, yeah, I would say whatever sickness. Yeah. That was an awesome movie. Uh, I loved it. Tom yeah. Cruise is the man. <laughs> Thanks for Green Banks. You're welcome. Um, so I actually don't have a lot prepared this week just because of everything going on. Um, but you know, instead of our usual news, we're just going to uh, do random topics everybody's bringing to the table this week. So of informers. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I see what you did. Oh, see what I did? Oh. So uh, uh, Brittany Banks, you actually don't hear this uh, because we don't have enough headphones. Um, we just listened to Informer by Snow because uh, we got a bunch of informers on the other uh, the show this week, apparently. Informer. Look at you, boom, boom, yeah. That was like the in joke of our Destiny stream that happened. It was yeah. amazing. By the way, um, when we were streaming the other day, I was uh, watch, watching it back. I don't know if it's because you came in late, but we couldn't hear your audio. You just hear me talking. Oh, that's horrible. You heard Kyle's audio, but not yours. So I don't know if it's. So we'll have to try it again and see what happened. I don't know if it's just because you came in late or what. Probably. Weird. Man. Uh, so, man, you missed out on the informers. <laughs> there was lots of it. It was it was really a lot. It was a lot. Uh, who wants to go first? Um, Banks. You, you guys can talk about like anything. Gonna... Yeah, we're, it's, sure. it's a willy-nilly kind of show. Shooting there. the breeze, all volume right, one. So all the topics that I, are we going to do one at a time? Yeah, go one at a time. Pick one. Do all the topics I'm going to have are theme park related. That's totally cool. I'm all about theme park related stuff. 
So the first one I have, uh, I love Christmas, and uh, except for Halloween, but I'm also ready for the holidays to come. Yes. So I want to talk a little bit about the new and updated holiday offerings coming to Disney. This is uh, from AttractionsMagazine.com. Brittany Tuttle, I Who? believe, wrote this. Who? Brittany Tuttle? Toodle? Toodle? I think. I don't, I don't know. I can't pronounce don't. that. Uh, so Please don't. <laughs> over she's, not as good, she's not as good as Seth. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Or or. or th- Therine, Therine Ther- 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 Black, I think. <laughs> Black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lost right now. His name is Theron White. I've just been. Dumb. Who's that? Theron. This is the guy who wrote. This is really awkward because Dee Dee doesn't. We apologize, Theron. We apologize. Wow. No, Dee Dee apologizes. We know who you are, Theron. Thanks. Anyway. Yeah. So. Over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, they're getting a brand new holiday. I guess you would say it events, a new offering for yeah. this year called Sunset Seasons Time Greetings. Out. Wait, when you say offering, does it mean we have to pay for it? No. no. So it's the new Osborne Lights. Basically. Basically Wait, are yeah. they, oh, really? Are they going to do like, no, something no, no, like that? No, 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 no. Let me explain Listen. what's going on here. God. Listen, dude. So <laughs> this is basically going to be a, a thing that takes the place of Osborne Lights. It's uh, on Sunset Boulevard from November 9th to December 20, 31st, 2017. Guests can enjoy Sunset Boulevard as it is transformed into an unforgettable site each evening. The billboards lining the tops of the buildings will move and tell their own stories about the season with some memorable, memorable characters, and even the Hollywood Tower Hotel will transform to tell the characters' stories. That's Basically, yeah. there's going to be projections up and down cool. Sunset Boulevard. On you know the how there's buildings. billboards on all the tops of the buildings? They're going to get projection mapped along with projection it even the Tower of Terror on the buildings and yeah. the tower itself. Oh, Number uh, one. All right, hold on. Are you done with the recording? Yet. All right, let's okay. finish this and so then we'll talk. There'll be character moments uh, that will tell stories like the Toy Story characters, uh, the Muppets, Mickey and Minnie. Wait, wait, uh, wait. The Muppets? Yes. yes. The Swedish chef and the Muppets uh, will talk. Will babble as he does Mar- while turning Mar- the street into a giant gingerbread house. Uh, Mickey and Minnie will look back at a hometown Christmas as Norman Walkwell style paintings come to life on the buildings and then Olaf will dream of a frozen landscape and things like that. And this is all the projection mapping stuff. All projection mapping okay. on the buildings on Sunset Boulevard. With now, themed music and lighting, lasers, everything. Now, I'm, here's, here's, no here's, here's, here's what I'm thinking. This, I had a lot of emotions going through. Okay, before you talk about your emotions, I want to make sure I know exactly where we're talking about. Yes. So just that whole entire street when you're coming down into studios itself where Hollywood or where uh where um, you take a ride. tower is. Yes. That whole entire street. So all Sunset okay. Boulevard, all yes, right. up and down. And I'm sure there'll be snow and, and things like that as okay. well. So um several emotions. Uh one, I'm very excited because I was a huge lover of the uh, Osborne mm. uh, lights and so I love that there's now a dedicated holiday offering back at studios in a, its own section. That's really awesome. Uh, excited for the projections. That sounds really cool. It's taken me some time to really think about how I feel about projections being on the Tower of Terror. That's that's, that's gonna. It takes away from the creepiness of what it's supposed to represent. Yeah. So why don't they just retheme it? Like what, what so. Mean? Okay. So like Disneyland, they do the re themes of the rides. Like, but you uh, can't retheme the outside though. I have but an answer they, to this when you're done. Okay. But but well, they can. They can make it like maybe even retheme like inside the ride, right? They can, turn it into a holiday ride. They can, but they will not, and here's why. Walt Disney World is an international destination park. We are not a local park. Hold on, before you move on, yes. move up your mic just a move little. Up my yeah, mic. yeah. Ooh, I slid there down. You there you go. There you go. Here we go. Sorry, fam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Disney World is an international resu- like destination park right. mm. versus a locals park like Disneyland is, where ninety to some percentage of Disneyland's attendees are locals versus here with their international guests and and non-Florida residents. So it would piss off more guests to show up and see Tower of Terror rethemed or with a holiday overlay than it would to see the normal layout all the time. That's why we don't get the holiday version of Mansion. That will never happen. And that's what Milo Beasley was talking about when he was here a couple weeks ago. Right. But but, I'm not even talking about just a re-theming tower. I'm just just seeing holiday projections on what's supposed to be a haunted hotel. It's going to be kind of weird for me but I'm sure it'll look great in person. Uh, Disney's projection mapping is always top notch. But what I'm very more excited about is the fact that they are now projection mapping tower the future use of this where they can do some really cool things during Halloween or during mm-hmm. uh, Friday the 13th or things like that yeah. on tower. It make, excites me very much. Yeah. They, they projection map the tower over in Paris and they've done stuff there with star Wars and it looks really cool. Yeah. Hmm. They um, have their galactic spectacular on tower of terror over there. Yeah, it's exactly. weird. It's, it is weird. It's and weird, it's, but it works. It's, it's going to get some time to get used to, mm-hmm. to it, but I'm sure once I see it in person, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it. But, 
I'm still I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited for this event. I'm, I I love the holidays and I'm love the studios getting a more dedicated uh, holiday offering. I think it's a really interesting answer to what they're going to do with uh, Potter over at Universal for the holidays. Yes, because they're going to have the first real holiday overlay besides what we do with um, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Right. So I feel like this could open a doorway to more themed holiday experiences, kind of like what you want where they do at Disneyland versus what we don't do here. Hmm. But I think if this is successful, it can open the door to more stuff. It can open the door to more Halloween things. It just, it, you have to go to studios, guys. If you want more of this stuff, you have to actually go and participate in it. I know it's hard right now. Not much is there, but this is hopefully going to bring in some people during the holidays. But what about logistics though? I don't think it's smart to have stuff like that on Sunset Boulevard. Like when you walk in. It's a small area. Yeah. Because a lot of everyone's going to be like, oh, watch. And then like. And get in the way, say, for example, if I just want to go or, you know, person A wants to go to, I don't know, Star Wars. I forgot what that right's called. Like Star, Star Wars? Wars. Thank you. That's Star on the Wars. opposite so side sorry. of yeah, the, but that's yeah. side the But only... still, you still have to go through the entrance, though. Say if you want to go in at like six, seven o'clock at night. They do. Well, they they like, do have like that. some back. They do have backstage bypasses. Like um, when you first enter the park to the right, you can bypass and go straight to Sunset there. So they may open that up it, to help yeah. Yeah. alleviate traffic yeah. flow. I also think that's where uh, parade audience control cast members will come in, too, because this is going to be like a nighttime offering, kind of yeah. like Fant and Star Wars Galactic Spectacular. So I feel like they're going to have cast members fluctuating like yeah. in and out to help keep that traffic flow going but what you're talking about like you walk into studios and you can either go left or right left goes to all the star wars stuff right goes to tower and to fan but i i, I mean we'll see what happens yeah we'll see what happens this will be a learning experience for them but this like, year if you want disneyland quality overlays and holiday stuff you need to go to this yeah. You need to support it. Is yeah. all right, so well, I don't like Christmas, so <laughs> well, you know what? Bah, I've got bah, more bah. Christmas news to talk about here uh with oh. the next part. But bah, what are you say, so do you think this is a not not a cop out, um, but do you think this is just an easy fix of just like, oh, let's just use projection mapping? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> My man. I mean, what would you want instead? No, I'm just asking. I'm just being I'm sure there'll advocate. be other things like, I'm sure there'll be garlands across, there'll be they're, lights on the buildings. I'm sure they'll have everything. other things than projections. I mean, do you think they're going to do like something special? Like, what's going on at uh, Beauty and the Beast uh, thing right now? The, the Toy the Story. Pixar that ended. Right? Are, uh, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. All right, w- once you know, Christmas time comes up, are they going to do a special show you know, at nighttime there maybe as well? Who they knows? Said. They, because they really that, haven't said, yeah. Last year, um, that's where Santa Met is right there on Sunset Boulevard too. Like oh, you went and picked up your your oh, your yeah. gimmick all to come back or whatever. Once upon a time. Yeah. Yep. All I know is I, I don't think this is a, a cop out. I think this is going to be a great thing for studios because last year they were very lacking in the holiday offerings. It yeah. was just yes. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. I yeah. hate that and show. I, I like that show. I don't. All I the, think all the podcasts. I don't even know what it is. As much as I liked that show, in comparison to Star Wars Galactic Spectacular, and okay, I give you that. Yes, but it's not this big epic. You know, it's not supposed to be. epic. I expected more. I expected more. Wow, I expected to you. more. But, shut up. but for for people like you, you'll be glad to know that this year they're running both Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, and Galactic Spectacular every night. See, and they that's did that last cool. year too, though. No, right? I think they I think they only ran Jingle Bell, Jingle they Bam. They only ran. All right, Jingle so Bell, I, Jingle Bam. I I have my kids with me. Um, Trinity, Aaron, um, Children. didn't didn't last year when we went, uh, didn't they have both of them at the same time? They they may have had it on like a maybe special night, or maybe because I could have sworn nights they did probably. Well, I'm pretty sure that like I th- I'm almost positive because I think when we went, it was like we watched both of them like right there in front of the Chinese theater. We like to do the whole, uh, you know, just stay sometimes they did. The I think later in the Christmas season they did. Or yeah, earlier. I think I think around New Year's. I know, yeah, I know at some point they did both, but they started out doing just one, or they did both and then you know, went to just doing one. I think they did it when Rogue One came out. They started doing because they added the, the um Rogue one the Force scenes, Whitaker yeah. bit where. Um, but well, I think it's a good beginning. Yeah. I think it's an interesting start for holiday overlays for us. Yes. Uh, so moving on to another holiday news. Over moving over to Epcot. Wait, wait, wait you got two? Yeah, there's two yes, new holiday things coming to new holiday holiday thing coming to Epcot. Well, well, that, it's not new. It's not new. It's, more, it's mainly name. an update. Okay. Um, so who's ready for a fourth festival at Epcot? Oh, come on, are you serious? Is this dude? more like food the only and wine? It is, time it, is the holidays around the world that we come know on, and love. Dude. Are you the, the name is going to be changed to the International Festival of the Holidays. I'm so over. 
Oh, all right, girl. Epcot has basically just become Food and Wine Fest all year round. Basically, food and so wine convention center. starting November nineteenth, Epcot's holidays around the world transforms into the International Festival of the Holidays, thanks to Brittany Tuttle on attractionsmagazine.com. Running until December thirtieth, this festival will showcase the holiday traditions of the eleven World Chase Showcase nations. It will include the traditional candlelight processional, seasonal food and beverage offerings at the holiday kitchens, okay. fan, fun family activities, and costume performers as they bring their long held traditions to life. This year will include a scavenger hunt called Chippendale's Christmas Tree Spree, where guests will can help the chipmunks find ornaments around World Showcase. So that's the only thing that's different then? It's, it's basically, basically a name change, and they're oh. bringing like, um, they're bringing the, the scavenger formula hunting. of all the festivals. Yeah, yeah the they're, they're bringing oh. food and beverage off. Because sure. oh. I actually the scavenger hunt. I really, really love the whole holidays around the world thing. Yes. Um, last year, Me too. Um, I don't remember what Frog was doing, um, but I remember like you know, it was me and the kids. We walked around and did like almost every single um, different you know Santa Claus or whatever offering you know because I've actually never done them all before. But like everyone that we were able to, we went from you know uh, Canada to UK to France. Every single one that we were able to, and we listened to every single story. I'm like, man, this is really cool. Like, why have I never yeah. done this before? So, did you yeah. guys skip Germany? I'm sure Frog told you that story. Oh my god, my Knox one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, but no, man. no, the the, the storytellers will ow. still be there. It's the exact same as holidays around the world, just a new name and more food and beverage offerings. And I actually really like the whole scavenger hunt thing. Uh, we've done it for Easter. We've done it for uh, Food and Wine Fest, you know, with a uh, Ratatouille character or whatever. Flower mm-hmm. Garden's um, got one too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? Who? The Festival of the Arts have one. I can't remember. Sure. I wait. No, Festival of the Arts had one with Figment, and I think yeah, Flower right. Garden had uh, the Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah, because that yeah, that's yeah, Easter yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually really like that because it, it's actually fairly cheap for you to do. Mm. I think it's like, what, $6? Yeah, something like that. six or $7. Yeah. And then you can buy, like, there's a pin set at the very end that I think you yeah. can get. Well, even when you get the map itself, when you turn it in, you get whatever the, the prize is there because it's, I think during Easter time, it's the, the one of the Easter eggs that they have in the parks or whatever. And then with uh, Food and Wine Fest, it's, a, it's a, a Remy pin, you know, that has, you know, whether it be the squash or pepper or whatever whatever it is that yeah, they have yeah, or whatever yeah. and you get to choose i actually really like that one because i like to go around with the kids and be like yeah. hey where the, where the heck is this thing because some of them are actually kind of hard that you don't know where in the mm-hmm. world the thing is but i i, I like that but but now uh, now i'm just it's like now epcot's all about the intellectual properties and festivals that's that's what the park is the now. experimental mm-hmm. prototype the, convention center of tomorrow well, no it's the uh, intellectual property community of tomorrow it's mm-hmm. epcot now epcot. Um, so dumb. i've said it i've said it you know since the beginning of the podcast as long as i'm being entertained I don't care. Whatever. So I, I hate I you so much. <laughs> but you know, with this thing, you know, it's no different than what it was before. It's just a new name, and it has a scavenger hunt. So it's not changing. And it ties in with the yeah. rest of the year with different festivals. As long as I'm learning something, oh you're learning over. about different cultures and their holiday yeah, celebrations. As That's long as it. I'm learning something, I'm good. You're gonna learn about how Star Lord went to yeah. Epcot when exactly. he was a child too. Um, he, he, he saw <laughs> the candlelight processional. <laughs> so bad. He so, saw the candlelight processional. Saw NPH. Yelled out, Doogie! <laughs> <laughs> you, like someone does every year. <laughs> You've been a pass holder for how many years? I'm going on five years, uh, September 15th. Wowza. When was nice. the last time you went to any of these uh, you know, various Santa Claus uh, offerings in each country to learn about their culture? Listen, uh, oh, I'm not a Christmas oh, oh. guy. I'm not a Christmas guy. But I'm just asking, you want to learn something. The last time I went to actually do the Christmas stuff was probably, I think, like two or three years ago. Then you need to fix Honestly. that and yeah. complain about I don't, the I don't do stuff. Christmas. I don't like, I, I, that's just my uh, thing. Maybe, I just don't like Christmas. Give you, give you, mm. I'm sorry. Your name's on the naughty list. Good. <laughs> Next thing, Banks. Ooh, Good. No, give me my coal. Uh, I'm done with my, Chris, my, right, my so first you, topic. So you, your whole Christmas was one. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about Star Wars because they finally announced. Who will direct episode nine? Since you the other can I get a, breaking Can news. I get a, yeah. a drum roll, please? I'm sure everybody knows. It's J.J. Abrams, y'all. Whoa. Are we excited? I don't know yet. I'm actually you know, pretty stoked, to okay. be honest, because I read an article that was like all the directors that were considered for the shortlist and everything, and like I'm really excited to see what Ryan Johnson's going to do with episode eight. Mm-hmm. Super stoked about it. I think that J.J. Abrams is a safe but understatable choice. It, have they announced if he's writing though? Yes, yes. he's writing. And he's directing. writing, but we have to keep in mind. <gasps> wait a minute, it's gonna be Return we, of the Jedi. Yeah. We, we have <laughs> to exactly keep in mind. Thought. Oh my god! So that's exactly what I thought. Ryan Johnson has already laid out the plans for what Nine is going to be. But and yeah, no, you, but, you, but, you have to imagine that it can't really can't be Return of the Jedi because now he's gonna have to. Well, that's really a, he has to address Leia not being there anymore. Well, 
Well, we thought that about you know, we thought that eight. about episode okay, seven. Good. Leia's getting addressed in eight, but Ryan Ryan Johnson, when he wrote eight, he laid out the bare bones for nine, saying this is how it's going to go. You're not going to screw this up. But it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean though. anything. Kathleen Kennedy could just be like, well, I like JJ. I ju- I JJ <laughs> is making Return of the Jedi Part Two. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy is being like Donald Trump handing down all these yafiyids all the time. Hey, with Kathleen Star Wars. Kennedy, that's because but she's everybody- a boss lady. No. I don't think that she would put someone. I'm surprised that- she just says, "I'm just going to direct Episode 9. Well, the problem is that everybody comes movies before. So. Everybody comes to the table with all these different ideas, and that's what I liked about Han Solo. That it was the people that were directing um, uh, Twenty One Dump chance. Street and, and like a movie. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be completely different. Even I'm like, though- ah, no, nah, this is too different. Let's bring in somebody else. They, they, they have their Star Wars formula. They want to keep it that way. But am I the only one that thinks the Han Solo movie is unnecessary? Me. Uh, I think dude, all of his entrance is very interested in a Ron Howard Star Wars movie. No, but now. his entrance in Episode Four was good enough for me. Like, yeah. come on, that. Oh, but I want to oh, know God, how he got the Falcon. True. No, I'm fine. I don't care. I'm fine. I'm good. I think it's. I think it's a take it or leave it kind of I, situation. I think you can enjoy the Star Wars films without the yeah, backstories. The standalones don't have to be watched with the the main saga. I, but though, I think Rogue One is. Necessary. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. But to me, but, it comes I, off as a cash grab. That's my yeah. problem. Uh-huh. It comes don't off as a cash grab. I probably won't. I, I'm not because like I, I. And that's okay. I'm over the Marvel movies to be honest with you because it's all basically the same formula for every movie. I'm I'm not falling into the hype of it, and it just comes off as a, just a cash grab. That's my problem with it. Don't lie. Star Wars needs to be special, and that's what that's my that's my problem with Star Wars now. Well, would it's you, not special anymore. Okay. Well, here's a question for you. Okay. Would you rather have a director that had a movie had two movies prior to Episode Nine, mm-hmm. which was I uh, I forget his name, but the guy that was on. Uh, oh, Colin Trevorrow Trav- or something like he that. He directed Safety Not Guaranteed, which was a really teeny tiny indie film. Mm-hmm. And then he directed Jurassic World, which did not do well as commercially as they had anticipated. The film was not as well received as they had hoped. Right. Would you rather have a bad Star Wars film with a director that had not touched the Star Wars movies before? Or would you rather have a returning director who had a commercially successful Star Wars film, take care of the franchise for you. And end the sequel trilogy. And, and end the sequel trilogy appropriately. Because I understand that wanting a different voice, or and I know that some of the internet is mad that it's not a female, but you, you have to think about who is best for the job at hand. They could have gotten Ryan Johnson and do eight and nine. Or I think that was probably on the table, but something happened and he had to turn it down. He might be too busy with post-production for eight. And may not be able to take it on because they already had to push it back for JJ because the movie right. was going to open in May of 2019. It is mm-hmm. now going to open December 20th, 2019. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I think for the good of the saga, I think this is the best choice for the situation right. at hand. That's understandable. All right. Well, I will say that. that I was actually excited for Colin Trevorrow to actually direct um, because I was just looking it up. Um, yeah. Jurassic Park or Jurassic World killed it at the box office. One point six billion. It, it made billion. it made a lot of it money. It made a lot of money, but, but it was like it critically. W- I, critically, it wasn't as well. It's my second favorite I, Jurassic. I don't movie. care about critics. I really don't care about critics. I mean, um, yeah. uh, no matter what, you know, even though I I joke around and Dee jokes around about you know Force Awakens being a New Hope Part Two, um, or, the, or or just a New Hope really because that's all it was. Um, I still love the movie. No, oh, yeah. Um, I'm not. I, I'm still going to love whatever episode nine is going to be, even if it is. Um, hold on, let me finish. Oh yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Like I, that's what I, I love, JJ. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But he, that's the only thing, the only gripe I have about what happened with episode seven is like after I watched it a couple of different times, it's like, man, this <laughs> this is, this is yeah, a new is, hope. It's the exact yeah, same yeah. movie. I'm not saying things wrong with that. But like what South Park said, it was it's that whole nostalgia thing that like mm-hmm. they're just hitting points on different things like, oh, you're you're loving this because we're hitting that nostalgia point. Right. So I just don't want, you know, I don't think eight is going to be like that. I think no. Ryan Johnson's changing totally different. And I just hope that nine, what what Ryan Johnson is laying down for groundwork for that next movie, yeah. that Kathleen Kennedy and JJ don't change anything because I love like Ryan's changed a lot of stuff. Like even just really so, so even talking about um, Kylo Ren. Kyle Ren, when he had that scar, he had it like on his yeah. on his was it eye right first? down the center, basically. Yeah, it was like this, and they but moved it to over Ryan the Johnson's eye. like this scar is dumb. <laughs> Let me fix this to me <laughs> be better aesthetically. So that's what's so funny is like Ryan Johnson's like, yeah, you guys don't know what the hell you're doing. Let me and fix like, this. Ryan right. Johnson is going to give us a maskless Kylo Ren and an unmasking of Captain Phasma. Oh my god! Yes. But like, 
do we care about Captain Phasma right now? I actually no. do care about Captain I thought, Phasma Cap- a lot. I, I think she's. I, I'm very intrigued by the Captain Phasma. As long as they actually do something with her, they pushed her to the freaking well, moon. I think, I think that. Yeah. And then it was like, oh. I'm going to punch you once, you're done. Set her up so she has a bigger (laughs) role in episode eight. Well, that's what we thought about seven. It's like, you know, we're getting all these uh, trailers and we're getting all this uh, artwork and figures. I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait for Phasma. You know, even at studios, when they were doing that special um, Star Wars night or whatever, you know, she was coming out and like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then she does the... Looking like a bad guy the March the first one. Yeah, yeah, she does that now and like... You really aren't that great. You, uh, Chewbacca like, punched you once. You're done. Feel like this <laughs> also had to be a decision between Kathleen and like Lucasfilm Story Group and everything like that because something had to have happened with Colin Trevorrow that it pushed them to decide to go with someone else. But I think I think the problem is two things actually. Uh, uh, with that, uh, I'm kind of on her side when it comes to the whole director thing. Mm. Uh, the Star Wars community is like the gaming community. They are very ruthless. Yes, and very they much. Want so. what and they want. Episode and if, one, two, and three got. Torn to shreds, even though episode three is the second best Star Wars movie. And because Ooh. high five, dude, it's so good. Whoa. It's so good. It's so oh, come on, come on. It's so good. Oh, oh I put it a third best. best. It's so good. Bro, that last 20 minutes. Oh, Master Skywalker. Oh, oh no, the stormtroopers right. are going to kill us. Please don't talk about the younglings when I'm present, <laughs> oh, okay? You're breaking my heart. Oh my oh, god. So Get good. me out of here. So good. <laughs> <laughs> that seems <laughs> so good. I don't think anything is better than the tunnel scene in Rogue One. Tbh, uh, mm-hmm. w- that is the most bad a thing I've tunnel ever scene. seen. What tunnel scene? The the, la- the last one of the last scenes in the movie with Vader. Oh, oh okay. that yeah. literally yeah, slayed yeah, my entire life. Continue. Yeah. yeah, I did backflips. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I mean, I can understand why they would want a safe bet like J.J. Abrams because everyone's gonna be like, oh yay, whatever. As for Phasma, I was talking to my friend who um, who's, a, who's a screenwriter, and he said it, it seems like primarily they got Phasma to sell merchandise. Like that's kind of like uh, General Grievous back in the day, right? Exactly. Or even we last week. The, yep. the Porgs this time. Yep. Yeah, it, it seems like it's just there just to sell merchandise. Because I never knew this. Like they make a buku load of money off merchandise. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this. Well, that's why the Ewoks were created. Right. Because yeah. They wanted something cuddly and cute to sell. Yeah. And that's what and we worked you know, this week or last week with the Porgs. And yeah. Brittany really? brought, or not Brittany, but Tori brought in a stuffed Porg. Yeah. And that's all part of the bottom line for them to make a profit because when they make movies, I didn't know this, they, they most, most if not all movies, just off sales alone, they're still in the red. Most, yeah. It's all because of marketing. All marketing. marketing. Even though I don't understand why Star Wars has crazy amounts of marketing. You when don't need it. You don't need it. Just sell a poster and everyone's just going to show up. <laughs> like, I mean. I mean, you just look at the crowds that came to Star Wars Celebration in April. Right. Literally, people slept overnight on a floor Bro. to be in the same room as Harrison Ford. Right. Like, and I didn't even know Celebration was going on until about two weeks before it was happening. Honestly, I really didn't. But I really hope that they do better by Phasma because Gwendolyn Christie is a fantastic actress. She has such a great range. Oh, she's on wonderful. Game of Thrones. She's beautiful. All right, Tormund. She's tall. Mm. <laughs> oh God. She's a she is a wasted asset to the Star Wars films if they don't do right by her in episodes eight and nine. And I that's agree. all I, I gotta say about it. I have it. to agree about yeah. that. Yep. That's true. All right, so what's next? Uh, so I'll bring in something really quick. Uh, usually we go off of the box office uh, for the weekend. And um, this one uh, was uh, pretty interesting because we talked about it for, what, two, three weeks. There was nothing good. Nothing good. Nothing. Um, I wanted to go see this uh, this weekend, but you mm. know, some stupid hurricane came through. So, uh, yeah, so that didn't happen. Um, so uh, Stephen King's It, every box office broken in its opening weekend. Are you ready for all this? So yes. uh, Jonathan Dorbush over at IGN, he says, following a low-grossing summer box office, Stephen King's It started up the fall movie season with a massive opening weekend. And in doing so, the adaptation of King's novel set a number of new industry standards, pulling in an estimated $123 million. Wow. It took the top spot at the box office this past weekend easily. And in doing so, it passed the following box office milestones in just three days of release. All right, you ready for all this? Yes. Let's go. Right this is me. like that uh, when, you're, when you're pressing your, your touchpad on your, uh, on your DS4 controller. Yeah. And then you see all that L2? And you see all those milestones come down? Oh, yeah. It's, it is about to get a lot of purple engrams. I'm just Ooh, saying. Here we go. Wow, powerful engrams. <sighs> they don't understand what we're talking about. Oh, no, man. but that's Blades okay. Too, yo. <laughs> that's okay. Trinity understands. Trinity understands. Travis Coaster understands. That's right. <laughs> All right. So Clayton we, understands now. Oh, Clayton. Oh, buddy. My apologies because now you're stuck. We'll be talking about that in a little bit, I'm sure. Get out. Uh, so, biggest opening weekend ever in September. The previous record holder was Transylvania uh, Hotel Transylvania 2, which made a $48.5 million in 2015. Ooh. Biggest well, op- like beat that by double. Wait, Hotel Jeez. Transylvania. Yeah, two. Yeah, and that, oh. that one was horrible. Um, biggest opening fall weekend. 
Uh, Gravity last set the record in 2013 with a 55.8 million opening weekend. Okay. Biggest horror movie opening weekend ever. Wh- what? The previous largest debut for a horror, f- horror film was 2011's Paranormal Activity 3, which okay. made 52.6. I. Wow. Did you like that well, one? I didn't see that one. I, uh, I watched two. It was okay. I've, it was okay. I haven't seen anything since Paranormal Activity 2, I believe. Uh, you're fine. I heard the yeah. newer one is yeah. really good, though. Yeah. I really need to watch the Insidious ones because they're... You haven't seen Insidious? No. Oh, I don't think I have either. You got less than a week yeah. before HHN. You got to catch up. Oh, the first... Oh, my God. Um, so let's good. see. All right, next one. Biggest opening weekend ever for a Stephen King adaptation. Uh, Unadjusted for inflation. 1408 was the previous record opening for a King adapted film. Uh, the tw- 20... Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, 07 film made uh, 20.6 million in its opening weekend. Wow. Second biggest mm-hmm. opening weekend ever for an R-rated film. What? Okay. Of course, number two only to Deadpool. Uh, uh, Deadpool had 132.4 no. uh, weekend. And uh, widest R-rated office. openings. While not a box office total record, its success was undoubtedly helped by the film's wide availability. It released in the largest number of theaters for an R-rated film, 4,103 domestically, Whoa. surpassing Logan's record of 4,073 theater opening earlier this year. Holy Unadjusted God. for inflation, its opening weekend makes it already the second highest total earning King adaptation ever behind the Green Mile, which adjusted for inflation, it already ranks as the seventh highest uh, King film ever. Wow. Holy poop. Woo. With That's... only one weekend down at the box office, it is already the 18th highest grossing film domestically of 2017. <gasps> what? Oh my God. I'm Having go opened see it tonight. to the third highest debut weekend of the year, uh, trailing behind Beauty and the Beast and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, its successful weekend was suggested by an impressive Thursday night preview box office haul, uh, which also trailed only behind Beauty and the Beast and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, and of course, sequels already you know been yeah. talked about. Yeah. Say, yeah. I think it's safe to say it got the is coming. last week. I think. So yeah. I, uh, uh, we Schneikes. we watched the original. Uh, I think it was uh, last night, the other night before, whatever. The mini series. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I forgot how good the the kid version of it, part one, is. Um, then once you get to part two, you're like, oh man, the adults are this, so this cheesy. This is so bad. Hopefully, they're able to cast the adults pretty well for the movie part so two. So the, the big rumor was that everyone that played the kid in the original it was going to play the adult version Ooh. in the second version. At least wow. that was the big rumor. Of course, you can't have that now with, um, who's the kid that was in like Sequest and whatnot? He played, uh, was it Jonathan Bill? Brandis? Yeah, I think his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, wow. you know, he committed suicide. and you know, yeah. So he's not able to do it. But I totally forgot Seth Green was in the original. Oh, what? That's right. He was Richie. I totally forgot. You know, beep, beep, Richie. He was a kid with the red hair and the glasses. He, wow. Yeah, he wore the Didi glasses back then. Hey, now. Um. Yeah, I I can't wait for this. I know, like you, you were talking about, like you were gonna go see a movie afterwards. I'm like, oh, are you gonna go see it? But now that I have the stupid kids with me right now. Stupid um, kids. Probably not gonna go see it. Actually, Aaron may want to see it, but may, maybe not Trinity. Trinity's already kind of like. From no. what I've been told <laughs> and from what I've read, it's not very scary, and yeah. Pennywise is not as present in oh, the but, like. Yeah. It looks so good. I mean, it looks great, but You'll if you're worried too, about getting scared, Trinity. you're going to be fine. You'll float too, Trinity. <laughs> That's what I've been doing all day. You'll hey, Georgie. Floats too. Hey, I was Georgie. supposed to. I was supposed to see this last week. I got invited to a screener. Yeah, what happened? Wait, what? You, you, what? Yeah, listen to this. Okay, you listen, were supposed to be on listen, the show last week, okay. talk about Game of can Thrones, I, but no. I, I, I got to go see an it screener. No. Okay, so we got, we got invited to an it screener, so we were going to go. But it was all the way in Altamont Springs, so we show up. All the way? It's not that far. It feels mm-hmm. far. <laughs> well, from Davenport, that's that's quite a ways away. We we went anyway. to a PS4 E3 uh, in the theater, and in was it Longwood? <laughs> no, where the, where the heck did we go? I don't even it was know. Uh, Winter Winter Park. Winter Park, and, and that was like an hour. And we're like, hey, let, we're let, going let because Brittany that's explain. I maybe I she has a good to reason. Tell the story. Oh, okay. Shots okay. fired. Pow pow. <laughs> so uh, we didn't realize that we were supposed to get there four hours. Before the movie started, because that's when people started lining up out the door. We get there an hour and a half before the movie starts, and there were too many people and not enough seats. Wait, were you Wait. not part of media? Yeah, was media. It, no, it was not a seats. media. Sc- I didn't oh, get so invited I'm, as media. I got uh, invited as the public. There, as far as I know, uh, attractions didn't get a media screening for it. But we didn't Matt's realize fault. that we had to. Matt's hey, fault. Matt's I'm not blaming fault. anybody. I'm I blame got Matt. S- it's all your fault, Matt. If you're listening it's to this car right now, fault. it's all your fault. <laughs> well, anyway, there were people literally in lawn chairs 
I can there imagine. since like 1.30 in the afternoon. That's the movie crazy. started at 7.30. We, when we went to you know the, the Winter Park uh, E3 thing for PlayStation, and we, we showed up like, what, hour early? Maybe an hour early. We're like, all right, yeah, we're probably going to be like, you know, maybe it's like 30, 40 people deep or whatever. No, like we were like one of the last ones to actually we were, get inside. Yeah, <laughs> I, was I was like, wow, this I, is nuts. Yeah, because I got nervous. I was like, I don't think we're getting in. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, man. But it was awesome. Never underestimate uh, the power of uh, people uh, without jobs and wanting to get stuff for free. <laughs> I was true. wondering, like, I was like, why the heck are all you guys just like sitting here? And there were people in like old Jack the Clown, like HHN merch. Oh, there were people in Pennywise t shirts. Like, literally, the person that you would imagine going to see a screening of it <laughs> was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that popped up in my head. Like, when we talked about that, like when we went to see this metal concert a couple years ago, Slipknot, and we're like, all right, we know everybody's gonna show up in black jinkos and 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 concert the or band and shirts the and, everything. and everything. So what did Didi show? And then I show up in uh, Didi's wearing a tie dye Bonnaroo shirt, and I'm wearing a uh, red Hawaiian shirt uh, with a white uh, uh, fedora. Uh, fedora. <laughs> we kept getting called out the entire time. Hey, what are you guys seeing? <laughs> Jimmy Buffett ain't here. Like, Jimmy Buffett ain't here. Oh my God, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like I swear amazing. it said Jimmy awesome. Buffett on the tickets, but oh, yeah. awesome. no, we but, uh, we got there too late. They filled up the theater, wow. so we just so left and went home. They didn't open up another theater? No. No, they, they didn't usually wow. do that for screeners, no. Because hmm. it said on the tickets, we will overbook this event, but we didn't think... Hundreds yeah. of people were going to show up, so... Wow. That's crazy. Uh, Whatever, I'm mad. I'm going to see it later. It's fine. <laughs> I but got tickets. what's crazy is that that's without Florida, because all the movie theaters are closed. Oh, oh my God, that's right. Numbers. A lot of the- so theaters were oh, yeah. closed how much this weekend. Better it basically, done. the entire state was like under lockdown. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Wow. Could you, yeah. Wow. Dang, that's amazing. It, that did not they even were open on Thursday me. and Friday, though. So that was part of the opening week. True. I actually mm-hmm. tried booking movie tickets for, was it yesterday? I think it was. I'm like, oh, let me see if I can just get out and see a movie. Yeah, no, everything was I closed. managed to <laughs> get two $5 Tuesday tickets at Artagon for this, for later tonight. So You can't just tell some people that, you know, that's what's going down. It's a date. It is a date. Didi, we we Whatever. could go on a double date. You know, we could double go date. in, hold hands, You're share hold popcorn. Hands during the movie? We, Why not? We, we don't care. Let's go get. To, let's go. <laughs> we don't care. I go, mean, go find Tori, <laughs> get some clown makeup on, and stalk, but stalk no, them. I, that's fine. Oh, Josh yes. would love that. <laughs> no, during the hurricane, we heard screaming outside of the window, <laughs> and it was like two o'clock in the morning because neither of us could sleep because the wind gusts were just so deafeningly loud. And he's like, "What is that yelling?" He looks outside and he goes. And then I, he said an expletive I won't say. And then I was like, what is it? And he's like, there's a clown outside. <laughs> and I was like, Shh. Well, what was it, Detroit? Or, or a suburb of Detroit that they were going around and hanging balloons out of yeah, a yeah, I, yeah. like, I would lose my and ass. And the police station said, we did this last year. We're not doing it again. It was on the Twitter account. It was so funny. I died laughing. It was so funny. Uh, I, I love stupid stuff like that. It's so cool. Uh, I'm really Lord. excited. So far, everything I've read except for everything initially before the movie came out has been really good. So I'll let you guys know. Yeah, I'm excited. I want to see it. I want to see it too. We're not cool enough to see it though with you though. Oh my God, it's a date. I'm sorry. I didn't know you wanted me to invite you. You can still go. Tickets are limited though. Apparently Josh doesn't like us. So uh, I mean, I do have movie pass. Oh, did you finally get your thing in? Finally got my card in today. I'm so happy. Uh, Have you you actually used it? No. I would have used it tonight, but you know, I'm not cool enough (laughs) to join this date. That's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, I guess we'll just. Thanks, you're not to... cool either. Apparently, I know. No. You know what? I've this known is, this a long This time. is for you ragging on me all last week, saying that I didn't watch Game. You didn't even listen to the show. You I don't did. even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Gosh. Gosh. And all right. what? All right, deeds. What do you got? Anything? In general? Yeah. More like wise. news. Yeah. Okay. News what do you wise? want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Anything you um, want to talk about? So, really new show. so there's a dude, a YouTuber. Oh, His name is PewDiePie. Paddy P. He has 57 million people that follow him and subscribe to his channel, and he's probably the worst human being in the world. You may have just like a little um, reason to be mad about this, huh? Uh, yeah, because <laughs> he's ignorant and he's a bigot. Uh, he did say the n word during a uh, live stream. A this live stream, by the way. This wasn't the first time. This isn't the first time he's done something like this. He did. That's uh, why Disney let him go, right? Because of the whole Nazi thing that he did. Yeah. And this is uh, kill all. Jews. Disney uh, as in Maker Studios. Maker Studios. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then he did another thing with um, uh, Muslims uh, that he did like right after that. Um, and so the the thing that bothers me about this is he did post an apology today. It was a half-assed apology. I think of it was uh, more apologies. asked than his last one, though. 
You think so? I think he said I'm sorry more, and I think he genuinely felt bad, but that doesn't mean he's not going to do it again. Right. Because no. I think he does get a guilty conscience about these kinds of things, but that doesn't make him stop doing the things. Well, I think my problem with it is the way that he said it. Like, he's just right. randomly just playing, what was it, PUBG that he's playing, right? He's playing PUBG. And he's just like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you, and, um, and he's like, oh, oh, crap. And then just like, uh, and he's just like brushed right over it. Yeah. I'm like, like you don't think that we just heard you say that or yeah just like come on i think like, it's obvious yeah. that he says it in just his regular vocabulary yeah like okay so kind of funny uh we, I, I know we refer to them a lot we love them sorry that's that's our favorite podcast sorry. so uh, i was listening to this show because they did yesterday doing like a reaction to it it was tim and uh, greg miller they did it and they're saying basically they've never gotten to a point of gaming i've never gotten to a point of gaming where i've got so mad you've heard me Mm-hmm. Get yeah, mad yeah, games. Yeah. Well, I've gotten to a point where I'm saying, oh, you bibbity bobbity boo. <laughs> I hate you. You know yeah, what I mean? Or something yeah. like yeah. that. Where, yeah. And it's crazy because it shows that that's part of your vocabulary. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. And what bothers me is that people are actually defending him, saying, oh, it's just a word. Like, no. You can't reclaim like, that. Right. And it just shows like how ignorant and I don't know. The gaming community is, is the most bipolar community I've ever been in in my life yeah. mm-hmm. like uh the reason why i'm affected by it is because i have such a passion for gaming gaming and music are my two things that's that's it that's i live breathe and sleep it and when i see stuff like that it just bothers me so much that people could just defend yeah. him like that and granted the people that are defending him on twitter are people who don't even have their profile pictures like the real ones they're you know the, eggs. Mean, right? the yeah, eggs they're, they're or the, they're the trolls they have like uh you know jack the clown on their thing or whatever yeah. <laughs> and it just it's just crazy to me that people just defend him saying oh it's just a word like even dr disrespect the guy who i used to keyword used to follow on twitch he's he said something i said i was just wondering you know what you feel about it and literally like 10 minutes later he said something on his live stream yesterday and he was just like well it's just a word people are just overreacting after that, i just unfollowed him because it's just like Ugh. why would you say like say something like that yeah you have such a following <laughs> and your response is Oh, it's just a word. Just a word. What I think was because I watched. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about Philip DeFranco. I I don't really. I know people like him and dislike him, but he's at least like informed and he presents both sides yeah. right. in his little exposés of it. So I was watching his video on this today, and it actually showed he ripped the video of the live stream where he said the word and he meant to say like a hole instead and corrected himself immediately. But it's like you equate that to that in your vocabulary yeah. and then you try to erase the meaning of that word by just saying it's just a word i'm sorry i actually advocate against using harmful words in the gaming community <laughs> yeah. dur, 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 dur. So, so, i'm so, an idiot i'm sorry i suck so bad but you're still gonna do it you're still gonna do these harmful things and then they like the people who defend him have been trying to equate what he did to other youtubers and other people right. in the gaming community who do use that word as for shock value and to harm others and then they're like well no one gets mad when he does it but when pewdiepie does it everyone goes off the rails but pewdiepie is probably the most influential gaming exactly youtuber not on youtube but not only gaming number one period he's the most subscribers like period in all of YouTube. Yeah, well, Sorry, he, just keep he, going. He told, uh, he said on YouTube that like once he gets a certain amount of subscribers on YouTube, that he was going to delete that YouTube account and try and build it all back up again because you know he's PewDiePie and he's able yeah. to do that crap. Uh, and and I think like I said, that's what bothers me the most about it is like that it's just obviously that it's just in his regular vocabulary that just like oh just so randomly came out and just. You said I've never come to a point where I'm playing any type of game, whether it be I'm streaming or I'm I'm talking to people on uh, a mic or even just playing randomly by myself in the house. Not once have I ever, ever even come close to even saying anything remotely like that offensively. Like it would be like the one worse would be like, oh, you M ever, you know, because, you know, of course, that is in my vocabulary. usually. (laughs) It's just like it's God, it drives me crazy. Uh, he's already facing repercussions for what he did because uh, how many of you guys have played Firewatch? I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Campo Santo is uh, filing DMCA requests against PewDiePie to take down all of their Firewatch videos that he has recorded. That's funny. Which will lead to his channel getting deleted because it will be so many copyright claims against his channel. He will keep getting strikes until wow. that channel gets deleted. <laughs> like I know. They made a statement today. Wow. Campo Here, Santo did? Yes. They said, we're filing a DMCA takedown of PewDiePie's Firewatch content and any future Campo Santo games. Campo Santo co-founder Sean Veneman said in a Twitter thread yesterday evening, 
Uh, there's a bit of leeway when you uh, have to have with the internet when you wake up every day and make video games. There's also a breaking point. I am sick of this child getting more and more chances to make money off of what we made. Veneman went on to call PewDiePie a propagator of despicable garbage that does Amen. real damage to the culture around this industry. Amen. And he encouraged other developers to similarly cut off their relationship with him. Uh, and uh, one of his videos uh, playing Firewatch has already been taken down as okay. of yesterday morning, though it's not clear if that paperwork had been filed against him. And uh, they... Uh, the, if you go on their FAQ page, you can right. see that they freely allow people to stream and yeah. monetize their streams of the games. Yep. Okay. And now people are saying, like, we don't know if this is legal because you encourage people to stream your games. But now you're taking that right away from PewDiePie. But other people are saying that he gave up that right with um, morally sort of yeah. Yeah, like representing the, the game right. incorrectly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now they wonder, is this going to be like an adpocalypse 2.0 of YouTube right. where all of these ad... People that provide ad revenue for stuff like attractions and other video game channels and things like that. Are they mm -hmm. going to pull from us because of what PewDiePie did? Probably. It'll probably affect everyone in some shape or form. But right. that's one uh, penalty that I guess is being caused now because of PewDiePie and his language. What do you say, Banks? Uh, uh, just uh, what you mentioned about ads being pulled. It just rem reminded me of, of our, our episode of the show last week for some reason got... Our ads pulled because of inappropriate content. Mm -hmm. The show. Are you serious? It was the, it was most Muggle, family the, friendly the thing. The MuggleNet Live and the Cookie Dough uh, place. And I'm just like, what was? Did what they was say it? why? No, it just said. I well, I disputed it. Yeah. And it's being reviewed right now, and I, I guarantee you they'll flip it. So, but I'm just confused. Like we're starting to see this a lot more often. Well, the weird thing is, ever since that whole change with Google, um, where you know, they're doing that whole ad thing that's different now, um, like wrestling videos, wrestling videos, um, a lot of people, um, like what culture, uh, what what culture is a huge YouTube um, account that talks about a lot of you know, um, nerd culture stuff, but it have, has a big following in in wrestling. But in fact, they have their own wrestling organization. They can't monetize anymore because of the the way that YouTube is hitting ads saying that wrestling is not family friendly. Wow. So ads aren't going there because they're saying it's not family friendly just because it's wrestling is what the problem is. So that's why they're going to Twitch. Yep. They've been doing Twitch stuff a yeah. lot lately. Wow. Yeah. Looks like it already got re overturned. So That's weird though. Hey. Well, that's good. Um but that's just something to think about. Pay attention over the next few weeks. Um you we could see more you uh, game developers pull from PewDiePie stuff, file more claims against him. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, if you're going to talk like that and you're going to represent the gaming community that way, you deserve it. Are you right over there? Are uh, you going to cry? My, uh, no, my allergies are just killing me right now oh. for some reason. <laughs> Allergic to Didi. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. I guarantee the wind. Like, but I the, hate like all the girls in the world? Mm. Oh, yeah. I hate the Apparently. <laughs> That sucked today. Oh, man, that man. was terrible. I hate the effect it's going to have on the community. That's yeah. my only complaint. Yeah. You can blame, and it's just, it's sad that it's just small bits of like seeds that cause the community to look so terrible. It, when in generally they are, they're great. I've met some great people, but at the same time, I met some really despicable people. I think it just means, it, it, I think it just depends on what community you're talking about. The right. kind of funny community, like, like I said, who we, best talk about, we talk about all the time. The best friends are kind of, uh, kind of funny. Um, I have never. Ever, ever, ever once seen anything vile, disrespectful, anything like that. It's just, I think it depends on what community. Like, if, if there's people that are like, oh, I, I'm all about PewDiePie, they, they know what they're getting and they're about that and they're whatever. Um, people, and we don't really have a community, um, but they know what they're getting with us. Like, yeah. I, I'm not, you know, some re crazy bigot that's going to start spewing nonsense yes, yes. out. <laughs> Oh my That's God. only at SeaWorld. <laughs> 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 but it's just like, uh, I, I think it just depends on your community. That like, if, if you're promoting yourself in, in, in a, a good manner or whatever, I don't, I don't know. It's just, ugh, it just drives me it's crazy. It's such an ugly situation, but it, it, it is, is something that has to be talked about because we have to set standards in this industry. Like what will be tolerated and what will not be and how do you handle it? Because making money off of YouTube videos is still like a relatively new thing. Mm. Like people yeah. have their whole livelihoods based around this. Yeah, it's true. I know a few people like that. It's just, yeah. It's like, you know. Just, ooh, just take bless it. you. Bless you. Take For your example, child. like Justin Scard and Adam the Woo literally make their entire livelihoods off of their YouTube videos. Like what would happen if they said some kind of racial slur or inappropriate thing just using them as an example, not trying to like target no, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
what would happen? How would that affect the theme park vlogging community and mm -hmm. the theme park YouTube community as a whole? What would happen? Well, it, so, it's like when you know, you're bringing about him ooh, when he went backstage and you know that all happened or whatever. And that's when the whole crackdown, I think, of all the security stuff started talking about like, hey, uh, you you're not allowed to come in here and start filming and this and that. And like, oh well, I mean, it just takes one rotten apple to screw one up a whole person. person. I get yelled at for my equipment during early night live at least every episode Are before. You yeah. Wow. Yeah, does, uh, does, last does, week. Does think extend yeah, yeah last yeah. week banks was with me i have a mount that does not extend it just rotates and it sits on like a mini tripod thing yeah does not harm anything i don't really use it on rides that are indoors or have any kind of screens or anything because mm. i'm not an idiot like yeah. i'm not going to ruin other people's experiences but we had it on primeval world you can yes watch we went on primeval world <laughs> thanks a lot irma for not about, destroying that we thing. talked about you Dee Dee, but we, we went on it you. and a cast member was like uh if that extends you need to keep it down for the duration of the ride and i was like it doesn't extend yeah. it just rotates and literally every episode, every time we get on a ride, someone says something. Wow, we we had the same thing. Like we we even have just like you you've been with us yeah, when yeah. we had it before. It was seriously just a handle. Like it's not even like the the not as large as what yours is. Yeah, it's just seriously just a handle, just a, yeah. a grip. And people are like, oh, you can't bring that in. It doesn't extend. It's seriously just for me to hold. It's just, you know, it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's, like it's, it's happens, my stabilizer. As you know, like some other vlogger I... got mad at me for saying it was a selfie stick. Yeah, it's not a selfie stick. It's a stabilizer. Okay, it's a calm, monopod. Calm, calm it down. does not. Okay. Extend, but they still they still hammer down on you for it. Like, what if I bought? Because I really want a gimbal for the show. What if I got a You're gimbal? You're crazy. You don't need a gimbal. I know, no, but yeah. I I want one. Anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> Like, Matt's what if, not buying you a gimbal. I'm, I'm not. Just saying. I would buy it for me. Okay? I'll buy. I'll buy you a gimbal. Matt, okay, Christmas. Dee Dee. Do you know how expensive these things are? Do you have any idea what we're even talking They're about? They're either fifty dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars. There's See, no in between. This is the part where I would say, just close your eyes and pretend I got you a gimbal. <laughs> no, but like, what would they do if I brought that in? Because I've seen people bring it on like media days and stuff, and nobody says anything. But like, right. when? When is it going to be like the threshold for the theme parks for the theme right, community right. who comes in and they're right. like, you can't have just, that. Just believe me, I'm thankful that they even allow us to do it. Yeah. Because you know, technically we're not even really supposed to go in there and start you know, filming and whatnot like that. Technically we can't even make money off of their intellectual property. Really? So yeah. Wait, so technically you can't even, if you go to the park, you technically can't even, you can't, like they get, they sometimes they get antsy about seeing people like live vlog. Like yeah. you know, doing like Facebook Live or whatever. Um, so technically, like what what we do as a vlogging community isn't supposed to be happening. Wow, I didn't but know that. We bring them such awareness yeah. and right. like, emotion. Mm -hmm. They oh, allow Di it. Disney is aware aware of us, but because you know we are so friendly with them, we, we work with them. Yeah. Anything they tell us, we immediately do. Yeah, like they're never really tell us. Okay, don't do yeah. that. Like I know Disney's PR team knows exactly what ENL is, but mm -hmm. they enjoy it and they like that we give Man, the viewers publicity. like you a, see that Lipton that she just I don't know she yeah, just put that back, back behind her I don't know what's oh my god yeah, <laughs> oh my god I'm not trying to I'm not trying to spill any tea y'all I'm just being honest it's kind of bright here <laughs> oh my god but like oh they know what it is and they know that something. that we that we provide like a view of things that yeah. don't guests don't really get to do or see right. because yeah. it's more like local stuff but it's uh it's definitely like i don't know it's a it's a fishy thing it's like how video uh video game like vloggers and stuff like that when they do live streams technically they're breaking copyright laws by putting the entire game wow. on the website but because the gaming developers love promotion, mm -hmm. they allow it. Oh, it's good. But so going, it's like hmm, going back tech. to the community thing, it's like people, you know, once they establish a product, you know, for example, I can't believe it, but we just, you know, celebrated two years of doing YouTube videos. Let's with give it up for two Yay! years. Yay! 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 Two years. I can't believe it. Um, but it's it's cool that there's people that watch us every week and they know that, you know, what they're going to get. We're like our, for our, for, for an instance, um, our show, we're not a crazy heavily edited show whatsoever. I have no experience with that. I'm not going to try and say that I do. Um, what you're seeing with us is us. Mm -hmm. It's our family. So it's, I, I look at it as an example. It's like, Hey, I have a, a family from the UK that's coming over here. This is an example of what you're going to experience just as if you were here instead of us. Right. So that that's the way like and people know, like as a community, you know, attractions isn't going to, you know, start spouting from the mouth all this, you know, diarrhea, you know, that's right. you know, just garbage. You know? Right. Yeah. Once once people establish that, you know, product, they know that, oh, this is something that we can trust. And I think that's when, when PewDiePie, when he started that crap like two, three years ago with the first, you know, the Nazi garbage, and then it became the Muslim thing, and then and now the the dropping the N-word. It's just like, you know, when it's a repeat history of crap, it's just like, 
Yeah, it's you, like, you're done, on, Garland. That's you're why done. I said like he apologizes for all these things, but he's still he going to do it. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with PewDiePie. But if that's going to be the case, leave the community. Like, I'm sorry that you make a ton of money, but you keep screwing it up and you're ruining it for everybody else. So just go. Yeah. 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 Sorry to all the bro fists out there that get upset, but. <laughs> bro fists. Bro fists. <laughs> All right, Banks. They you got do, another right. one? They do do yes. So going back to uh, the theme park community, um, we are losing another classic attraction. Here Come in on, Orlando. dude. I heard about this. Yes. So uh, Terminator 2 3D. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what do you care? <laughs> you don't care. Oh. Oh. So Terminator so 2 baby. 3D is closing over at Universal Studios for Florida. Simula- Thank you, Brittany Tuttle, once again. For is it magazine.com. for a simulator? We don't, uh, we don't know. They here, have- here we go. So. No sim- I don't, actually, I don't think it's going to be a simulator. Here, Universal oh. Orlando Resort announced that Terminator 2 3D will host its last shows on Sunday, October 8th. Mm-hmm. The closure is said to make way for a new live action experience based upon a Universal franchise, which will open in 2019. What do you think it is? What do you guys now, think it is? We got we to gotta, we gotta think the brainstorm here of what live action Universal franchises are left. Obviously, they already have a Fast and Furious ride coming. Simulator, um, <laughs> but this one I'm thinking this is going to be like I think it's going to be like a live theatrical show that all right. because it's already a, a giant theater. So I talked about this on my on Vacation Kingdom's Twitter. So once that news broke last week, mm-hmm. uh, I sent it to a friend that that sits next to me in the office, and she immediately said, "Oh, that could be pitch perfect." Yeah, like you know That's what? what I'm starting to think. So I, I honestly don't think it's a bad idea. I think you had a show like that in Beetlejuice. Where it was like this big yo dance oh, production and yeah. singing and whatnot, and I th- I've never personally seen perfect or Pitch Perfect or whatever. It's I, okay. it's, it's, the, fir- the first one's very good. But, it's like Glee, but for adult yeah. females. Yeah. And, and they have they have a a show that they perform in the New York streets called Sing It, which is an yes. acapella group of singers. Mm-hmm. So maybe if they have this permanent Pitch Perfect live acapella show. They can take that show out of the streets, and then it's inside mm-hmm. an indoor theater, and it's a big production mm-hmm. with lights and choreography and and pop songs and things like that. So, yeah, I, I could see it being a pitch perfect. But I'm also hearing a lot of people thinking, Born. well, Born, the Born series is universal, oh, so but, maybe it could be some sort of attraction based on that. Would you would you, would they do an actual like attraction, or would they do just almost like a uh, see, a slash or a live th- action slash 3D thing with like like what Terminator like, like is doing? Terminator. You know, yeah. I don't know. I I don't think this is going to be a full blown. Like e ticket attraction, there's not enough space yeah, there so for either. a big attraction. I ha- I really think it's going to be some sort of theatrical show because you already have T two. It has a huge theater with a lot of seats in there. If they take out a lot of the pre show area, they can extend the theater if they mm. need to. Mm. So I I'm just really starting to to lean and believe this this will be a theatrical show. Could be a 3D show. Could be live stage show. Don't know. We'll find out. So hopefully sometime soon. Can and, I? Oh, good. I just want to put out there what I want into the universe. I know Go it'll it. never happen. RoboCop. Oh my God. Is that <laughs> a Universal franchise? No. Uh, I believe it's Warner Brothers. It's, yeah. Well, Paramount or Warner Brothers? It says it was distributed by Orion Pictures. Oh, that's right. Who owns Orion, though? Because that well, that, does no, not That's exist. not who owns it now, though. Yeah, who no. owns it now? Who did the new version? Who, yeah, who did the new version? Uh, um, well, it's, wh- a, it's a, um, it's wh- a portion of Warner Brothers. That's so. what I thought. Yeah, so that's... that's, that's I've, I've heard some people say Secret Life of Pets, too, because that's a well, universal property, too. <laughs> well, and that's what <laughs> I, I, The rumors I keep hearing about Secret Life of Pets is that uh, something... Based on that, will take place of Shrek. Yeah, because isn't that what Hollywood's doing? Where they have like three different versions. They, they're of a doing movie? the DreamWorks Theater in their Shrek, so they're gonna have like Kung Fu Panda and other. And DreamWorks I, I could totally movies. see that coming here too. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, we have Shrek Five or whatever it is coming. You know, next couple of years or whatever. Wait, is they announced another Shrek? I'm almost positive I saw that a couple of years. Uh, I really hope yeah. not. Uh, Let the franchise all I know die. Is Shrek Trinity, 4D, research, there's no point for it to ever exist anymore because yeah. you could see it on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hollywood's got that coming. So I think you know anything DreamWorks, whether it be Life of Pets or whatever, you know, it would go into that well, theater. Dr- so. Your Life of Pets is not DreamWorks. That I was, thought it was. No, it was Illumination Entertainment. The one the people oh, say that's, right, that's right. That's right. That's right. I and that's think. Universal. It's basically. Universal. Yeah. Right? yeah. Universal. Okay. yeah. Oh, so uh, they might do Sing then. They could do Sing. See, I heard Sing was also an option for the uh, Terminator Theater too. That was a rumor I heard. Uh, that could still be a live stage show or three D. Something three D, yeah. Mm-hmm. I never seen it. So. You could, yeah. I would say you could do it almost like you're watching like an American Idol type show. You know, like yeah. just like and saying, you could vote, and yeah. stuff like that. Something, like, yeah, something hmm. silly, yeah. That, that could be kind honestly. Of exactly I would really rather neat. it be honestly just Pitch Perfect. Like just put it in there. Fine, but the, even with Pitch Perfect, perfect, you could add a voting element to it, and each time you go, a different person in the cast could win. The difference, though, if you're doing Pitch Perfect compared to whether it be Sing or whatever, um, money. Because oh, live actors versus yep. actresses. Exactly. Equity. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but I, that's the thing I really hate about a lot of theme parks these days is that they really are starting to get away from doing equity. Yeah. I love equity. It really adds a, a really personal element to what you're going to see. That's what, the horror makeup show at Universal is one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to ever go do because I mean, the shows, each, show, each time is, you go, awesome. could be different. That, that, the horror makeup show is the best. The Beetlejuice, the Rusty Cutlass Pirate Band in Adventureland that used to be a thing in Magic Kingdom. Well, even um, Doctor Strange and then um, or, uh, Star Lord. I like that they're equity yeah. actors you know, yeah. coming in there too. You right over there? <laughs> and then I'm trying to think of other stuff that's gotten cut because of money. Um, <laughs> Pixar wasn't that cut for money too. Well, Pixar I'm not what? Sure. Pixar Live. No, I th oh, I thought that was, was just a limited. Yeah. That was just a limited thing. That was what a well, de it definitely got to be expensive to pay that entire orchestra. Oh yeah, we got week. something from research. Stop. Get out of here! Bro. I'm gonna throw up. Nope. Mike Myers because needs some money. We need another. <laughs> well, he's doing the he's doing the um the Gong Show. He's the host of the Gong Show. That's uh That's not Mike, Mike Myers. That's Mike Myers. Are, no, it's not. I guarantee you 100% that's Mike Myers. He's playing a character in that. Is it really? It is Mike Myers. He's hosting the Gong I'm Show. No, the that Gong now. Show. Shut the Gong up. Show is back on what? ABC ABC, ABC I think, one yeah. Um but it's it's this guy that looks like Robin Williams. That's I thought it was just some random actor. No, it's Mike Myers in makeup. Yep. Okay. So it is currently uh I had no idea. Uh, it is. Yep. Da. That's funny. Okay. So I'm looking. <laughs> All right. So uh, while, while uh, Brittany's looking that up, um, we had uh, a big uh, video game release this week. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because we don't actually don't have a lot of time left. We only have about like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, geez. Um, uh, Destiny 2 released. Um, did you've been time. playing the I'm heck out of it. Back. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Sorry, Banks. We got to talk about this. I'm checking out too. <laughs> yes. But before we do, can confirm Mike Myers is playing a character. Uh, neither of them have confirmed. No one knows who the host is, but it's a uh, previously unknown British comedian, Tommy Maitland, who hosts the show, but everyone thinks it's Mike Myers. Neither ABC nor Mike has ever confirmed. That's interesting. But it is, I have to go back and look at him. it now. Like you watch him and you listen to some of his talking, especially when he laughs, you can, you can hear it all. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can yeah. hear it. But there you go. There's the news. Okay. Interesting. Continue. You probably hear like you know the but, whole Austin yeah. Powers thing in it. I'm sure. T2 3D, Austin La Vista, baby. Mm -hmm. See you later. Deuces. At least it's on a simulator. Yeah. Yes. All right, D. Do you want to talk a little bit? Uh, yeah, we can talk Destiny too. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, <laughs> so everybody's checking out. Everyone's uh, checking off their phones. We, we That's cool. We won't talk a lot about. We won't it. talk a whole lot. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did the first one because it's a lot different. It is. Than what the first one is. Right. So when you're going in, you know, with the first one, you, you're checking in with the tower and you're getting your, your bounties and yeah. stuff like that. This wait, one, you've gotten bounties? No, no, no. The first oh. game. The first game. The first oh, game. Oh, I thought you were talking about I was like, wait, what? Where are these bounties? <laughs> anyway. But you don't start to do anything different. Yeah. Until like end game. End game is where everything's different. But that, it's that's, game. And that's what I loved about Destiny 2, that they actually pushing a story on you. Yeah. Instead of some terrible, like, the light shine away huh <laughs> and the end of the movie is just like i don't know i mean of course like so it, weird. even the story for this one was a little bit like i still understand really like <laughs> what is the the traveler really we still don't really understand what he is or what it is or it's, i just know he gives you power yeah it gives you power when it destroys itself i don't that was <laughs> That ending was weird. I'm sorry if I spoiled that. Well, all right. So the oh, no, it wasn't even in the end. Oh yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, there was yeah. spoilers. Um, something happens at the end where, um, well, I'm not gonna say what happens that right. part, but at least some other bad guys coming. Yeah, we don't know what it is. It looks like the hive. It maybe. looks like the hive, and that got me hyped. So I think that's probably Leviathan. That's what oh, and that's when that's what the the raid is. Yeah, the raid. What, are, the, the raid, raid comes starts, out Friday. This Friday. This Friday. And what's what's the light level? Two sixty. Two sixty. I this think it'll be a two sixty to two eighty light level. I think I'm um at like two thirty something right okay. now. I yeah, think. you can you can easily get it. Yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been playing almost nonstop. Well, Same. minus the hurricane. Even the hurricane I played. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you had you. I didn't realize you had one of the games things. Yeah, I I I. I or like, did you just buy it? I just bought it. because <laughs> I knew I was gonna go to my parents' house and they don't have a, they don't because okay, we're not big on entertainment. We're really not. My yeah. parents aren't. My dad just watches listens to the news, and like NPR and stuff like that. So when it comes to TV. Like since my mom moved away, uh, my mom doesn't live in the country. Wow, are but you guys like? <laughs> are you telling each other secrets? Like, <laughs> at, like I just saw like, something on my Twitter okay. feed that was really okay. fun. Oh, okay, I might talk about it. All right. Okay. okay. And so uh, my mom lives out of the country. So my dad's like, I'm not gonna buy a new TV. I don't watch TV. So 
I was like, well, let me just get my own little monitor. I, I had it for a little while, but I you just did. I, I didn't use it enough, so I ended up just returning it. Okay. Um, but if you guys don't know what this game's case is, it's seriously like a briefcase that has uh, storage in it for your console yeah. and this, like, what, maybe, like, 15, 16-inch TV? Yeah. Or LCD screen or mm-hmm. whatever? Yeah. And you just plug it in, and oh, th- there's your whole, there's your whole thing. Your console. Yeah. I love it. It was I, awesome. Yeah, it's really I love cool. it. And so I played all weekend long. You still run in Warlock, though, right? I'm still running Warlock, but I think my next is going to be a Hunter. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Since... Since Kyle doesn't play a hunter, yeah, and you don't play a hunter. Well, so I figured that I'm gonna play, you know, uh, hunt. I was thinking hunter. I think I'm just gonna start a character from scratch because I actually had hunter and titan uh, and the warlock all carried over from part one. But Same. I, I don't know the whole creation process now, so I want to change it a little bit to see like what it looks like. Well, because my guy now, like my warlock looks like Joker, and my hunter last time looked like Harley Quinn. So okay. it's, I think we're still gonna roll with the Harley Quinn type character. Yeah, just but I want to start her from scratch to see like what she looks like. Because like according to Andy Cortez, I'm kind of funny. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Maxim Cortez. Shout out to Maxim Cortez. He says it's basically the same game, same creative process. Oh, okay. Creative okay. Process, which he hated because I listened to the episode today, the game's cast. What's your favorite gun so far? Do you know the name of it? Or what kind What kind of gun is it? It's called like the Gravitron Dude, Surge. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes I, the yeah, rifle? the pulse rifle. Yeah, the pulse yeah. rifle is a beast. So, all right, so it's really cool because like, all right, so it's a pulse rifle, so it shoots like three bullets at a time. But actually, like when you kill somebody, it explodes in this huge, huge like, like void explosion ball of like awesome. Banks and Brittany have no idea what we're talking about. It's but, so awesome. But everyone's saying we should have gotten the pistol because it's basically Fate Bringer. Oh, but no, that's all right. I yeah, like this one. I know. I like this one too. But I do have this awesome rocket I just got in. You have a PS4, rocket. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what does she do? What did she just do? Oh, I, have... I love you, Brittany. Thank I you. did the DD. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. You have a PS4, don't you? Uh, Josh has one. So not... does Josh play? Uh, no. What? He, listen, he plays like uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Well, that's a great game. That's the best one. But that's he like loves, five years old. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And he he likes narrative based games, but he doesn't. This is a narrative. narrative. Why are you yelling? At me? <laughs> All right, we're we're Listen, gonna call Josh. Josh, we're gonna be like yo, play Destiny. Josh. We already talked. You're one watch, I know here. you're gonna watch this because your your girlfriend, your here. main squeeze, is on here. Yo yo, yo old lady <laughs> oh is here. God. He's a biker I'm now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sam Crow. Uh, <laughs> Get, get, get Destiny 2, get, dog. Get, get, get Destiny. And just, just, Listen, just, just, Josh, I'll make you a deal. All right, Brittany, you're going to make jo- make sure Josh listens to this. Okay. Josh, sure if Brittany didn't tell you yet, I used to work for TNA Wrestling. I already told him that. TNA, right. TNA. So TNA. I still know plenty of people that work out there. He loves wrestling. I can work something out where maybe you, know, you meet some wrestlers after Ooh. the show. Pick up Destiny 2. He's being legit because he does it all the time for our, one of our friends. See, yes. before he offered this for free, but now he wants you to do something. Yeah, that only it. makes sense. Yeah. So... Yeah. You have to play Destiny. Yeah. I watched the the weirdness that is Twin Peaks. So you, you have to did. get Josh to okay. Uh, okay. That's play fair. That is true. Okay. Oh my god. We're gonna, what are we gonna do? Two podcasts? <laughs> Hold on. Let's talk about. Okay. Let okay. Let's go. Deal, let's then. talk about. Okay. Let go. Me, let me make you a deal. So when you finish Twin Peaks, I want you to try to get Stephen Miller and then me and Josh on here for a Twin Peaks episode of Expansion. Stephen Miller is the guy from uh, Disney, Disney, Disney Parks blog. blog. Yeah. Good he guy. is a huge I'm, Twin Peaks fanatic, and it is my dream. To do this podcast with him, he, he was one that actually. I think Gavin was in pictures with him as uh, Doctor Strange, right? Yes, yes, yes okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can make that happen, I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't have any pull. I with can him. contact Steven and get it done. I I'm tweeted saying, at him and he didn't say anything, but he follows me on Twitter and he likes my Twin Peaks stuff, so I know he knows I exist. But <laughs> <laughs> he's a friend of the show, so I will. I will that is my out. dream. But when you're finished with it, I'm because you need to have fully consumed it to be able yeah, to talk I, about I, it. Yeah. All this Twin Peaks talk the the weeks beforehand has turned me off to the show so much. No, Shut you, your mouth. You should watch it. No, it's, it's, oh, it's I turned have to me watch, on to the show. I have to like watch all this. Oh no! I have to watch episode one of this season and episode two of this season. No, no, no! In order to understand, I, I had no interest book, in Twin Peaks until this movie. podcast. And if all this talk of Twin Peaks has got me wanting to see it. Really? Yes. Literally. And if you don't watch this movie, you me. can't see season twelve. <laughs> season twelve doesn't really exist. Oh, wait, but it really does. But it's you have secret. to watch it backwards. But you have to watch it all Thanks, can backwards. Thanks. You make gifts of all of this, please. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> see, and I will say, I, I do crap on it that it's very confusing because it does get very confusing. But I still like watching it. I don't uh, know what it is. It's it's really compelling, and it Com- makes you... <laughs> hey. Compelling? My brain feels like it's going into listen, overload, listen, listen, and listen, I don't listen. even know a thing hey. about this show. Listen, listen, listen. Once you get to that Showtime stuff, 
Ted Cruz stuff starts happening. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone wonders why I watched the Game of Thrones so much. But no, it it actually is. It's I know I don't know what it is. The the whole first part of uh, the first season. Or is it season two? Where, where does it start to get really weird? Season it two. It starts to get really weird in season two okay. because that was but, David Lynch's grown man temper. So you can you can almost skip the the last part of season two to be perfectly honest. Like once once they find out who actually murdered Laura, you can really technically skip a lot of it because it doesn't really do anything to the story. So to it me just at builds all. on the mythology. So it's like a filler episode in like an anime. Yes. Basically, what happened, I've told you this before, he Boy wanted Lord. to never solve the mystery of who right. killed Laura Palmer, and mm-hmm. ABC made him solve it within two seasons because it wasn't doing well on ratings, so they were like, wrap this up and get this out of here. And he threw a temper tantrum for like 20-some episodes because he didn't want to end it, and he ended it too early before he ever wanted to and then afterward he made fire walk with me which became a cult classic though everyone took a dump on it because they hated it because it was real david lynch and not abc david lynch and showtime is basically them saying you know that movie fire walk with me do that but in a tv show and, and that's exactly what it is. Fire Walk with Me was was good. Um, it, but You're one it, of the few people it, that it, say that. Well, not <laughs> not not that it was a good movie. I'm not saying it was a good movie at all. But it was just it was cool because it added to it, like because it was before Laura was murdered, and you're figuring out like, oh, this, oh, that happened. Oh, like like because I got like the gist of what was happening. Mm-hmm. You know, watching the first couple seasons, but when with the movie, you get a little bit more, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Ooh, but uh, oh, um, but what's this deal about? Because I remember I, I I linked you a book. It was like this book. The Secret History of Twin Peaks. Yeah, it's a book that's this oh. thick, and it literally describes the history and the beginnings of Twin Peaks. I'm good. The findings of Major Briggs, which you'll learn more about the history of the Black and White Lodge and everything else, backstories of characters that you don't really know about, and it sort of builds on your knowledge of the lore of Twin Peaks before you watch the Showtime series. You don't have to read it beforehand. It just makes more sense if you do. And then this October will uh, be the release of the final dossier, of Twin Peaks, which will wrap up everything, supposedly. So the Showtime show, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the Showtime show, that's it. So now the season's done, it's over, that's it. For now. They they said that they are open to telling more if David Lynch is open to telling more, which he hasn't come out and said either way. Okay, Uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I was just going to say, I I would still say, like, once you're done watching whatever show, give it a shot. I I, I didn't think I was going to like it. it. It does get confusing. But I still want to watch it. I don't know what it is, and it's it's not confusing like lost confusing. It's different. Oh, thank God! Because it's not like time travel and stuff like that. It's it's like weird supernatural stuff, and I I don't I don't want to say what it is, but I I would still say to watch. Yeah. Because okay. my problem with lot with Lost, I ended at season four because it's great show. It was, but they should have ended it a lot earlier. Thank you. Yeah. And and the problem yeah. is with every single episode, you had so many questions and they weren't being answered. And by the time of season four happened, I said, I'm done. Okay. So when like, you finish Twin Peaks season three on Showtime, you will feel that way. But do your research, read about it. Because TV's not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not no. I know DD. Is there reading involved? I'm not. Well, no, I love reading, but work, it's like you have I to can't. work for it because they people waited 25 years for this to yeah. come back, and David Lynch never gives you anything. You have to work for it, and he could have taken the easy route and just wrapped everything up like we wanted, but. You have to work for it, and you have to try to understand it, which is why the books come in handy. Like, I have Laura Palmer's diary I'll let you borrow. I have the secret history of I don't want to read about none of that. (laughs) It actually... No, no, no. No, 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 it's actually really cool because you see her writing it, and then you see where Bob takes over her 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 brain, and it writes as Bob and her arguing in the diary. The diary is this big. Secret history is this big. I'm good. But Secret History is one of the most beautifully bound and designed books I've ever owned. And, and awesome. I didn't say I didn't Bob? want to read it because it's bad. Bob? Yeah. It, yeah, it's... You'll, you'll, you'll see. Is it um, disturbing? N- yes. Yes. It's, it's really... And you know who actually really loves Twin Peaks too? Is our buddy Joe from England. He loves, loves, loves Twin Peaks as well. Did he also it, watch this episode at this point? No, I'm, I don't Two think minutes he did. later, oh he just watched it like to a, this episode. <laughs> Shut up. Then he, he went back literally, in time. Literally you also have Twin to play Peaks. NSYNC's Bye 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 at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> literally, Twin Peaks is one of the most influential supernatural detective shows on television. And you can see, once you watch it, how it's influenced every other supernaturally based or 
dark neo noir detective based show ever since the nineties. Don't, don't, don't tell me there's gonna be a point where we have to play audio backwards to understand something. No, it already happens in the show. Yeah, you get out of here. They yeah. already yeah. do yeah. that for you. And but, then they're like, "Oh, you gotta rewind no, it no, and no, like no, try no, to no. interpret it." No, 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 they no, no, no. actually say the vo- the, the the pieces. On the show, well, I'm trying to think. Of, so when they recorded the show, they spoke it backwards. But when you're watching it, it's played f- rewound. Re- so the way that they did that was they read the lines forwards and then they rewound the audio of that so they could hear what it sounded like backwards. And then they oh, learned they how to say the lines it. backwards and then it, it's really cool, it though. forwards. So it's like you're so it's like really weird, really yeah. weird way of saying. Okay. It's supposed to sound alien and otherworldly. Right. It makes sense. David Lynch is a weird sound designer, but everything he does is purposeful and it has meaning. Doesn't he have like a, a unique voice? It's like, like art. the way he talks is yeah. very, very. What's very that, Brittany? What? <laughs> he actually plays a character in the show too, really? and he's like Gordon Cole, yeah, yeah. of the FBI. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, he talks like this. I'm gonna so say, be does. careful, Coop. <laughs> I'm gonna say two words to you, and you're gonna immediately want to watch Twin Peaks. Suck it, not suck it. <laughs> um, Alan Wake. No way! So Alan Wake is very, very, very much inspired by Twin Peaks. Really? You have no idea. So is Life is Strange. Why did you have to do that? Like now, no, because now you're going to watch it. Because that's what. Why did you do that? So no, I remember playing Alan Wake, and I'm like, man, this this kind of reminds me like a you know um, uh, Twilight Zone type deal or whatever. And that's why I was reading stuff about the the creators. Um, Who was it? Um, Oh God. Uh, uh, Remedy. Yeah, Remedy. Um, And he kept saying that he was very much inspired by Twin Peaks. Why did you it do that? It definitely is. That's Wayward not fair. Wayward Pines. Did you ever watch that? What? Wayward, Wayward Pines. Pines. Isn't that a show inside uh, Alan Wake? It was a show on Fox. I know you're talking it, about it. They only no. did two seasons of it. It could get renewed for a third. I don't know. I don't keep but up with it. That, that wasn't a show inside? It was literally no, like was a modern else. day Twin Peaks for Pines. a minute. I've, I've, I've heard something about uh, uh, how remember. Gravity Falls is kind of like a kid's version yes. of Twin yes. Peaks. Yes, very much. I love Gravity Falls. The Gravity Falls loves Twin Peaks with a passion. All right. That's not fair. Why did you Thanks. do that? Because I know that's because I know how much you it's loved so Alan Wake. Influential that because like it's super like we like there's characters in it that are super '90s and over the top, you right. know, written and whatnot. And in Twin Peaks, it's just like like Coop. Coop is straight up like Boy like, Scout. Yeah, but I love him. Um, they're the like, characters like Andy. Um, oh, super over the top. Like basically, he's Doofy from uh, Scary Movie. It, Laura it, Palmer is it, isn't and this, Audrey Horn. Isn't Twin Peaks where the you know the damn fine cup of coffee comes yes, from? Yes, yeah, damn yeah, fine yeah. cup of coffee yeah. and the it's, cherry pie. Yeah, yeah. It, just you, watch you, it. You should give it a shot because we're gonna ramble on forever. If um, we do. So we have uh, we're at hour thirty right now. We can go over. We can go over. We can go over Slightly. a little bit. Right. A little bit. Thanks. I know you said you had one more topic you want to talk about. Oh uh, well, I mean, if anyone else has a topic, Brittany, do you have something I'm, else? I'm good. All right. Well. I'm um, good. Let me pull up my list here, and that's gone. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Um, so, Star Wars. I mean, obviously, Last Jedi is coming out in December. Okay. Um, yes. The day after Last Jedi uh, is released, Disney is bringing back their special Star Wars Galactic Knights event. Um, now, this is an event that they did in April. It is a separately ticketed event, like Halloween, Christmas parties. Okay. Um, it's basically Star Wars weekends if you paid for it. Without so, as much stuff. Without as much stuff. So and they only have one night. They have Wait. actors and whatnot, though. Yes, at least in April they did have actors. Okay. Wait, time out. So it's not as much stuff you're expecting me to pay separately. Yes. Yes. Like, but the park and, and, and is closed. I hate to see so much. The <laughs> actors do not do meet and greets. You see the actors what? in the parade and in Q and A's, but you don't do meet and greets. Oh, I didn't know but that. But you get like no. a Star Wars celebration style panel with the actors. They haven't said who's coming this December. No. So no. you get special food and beverage offerings. They're offerings, inclu- but wait, not wait, free. You're not free. Oh, come yeah, no, but you can buy. They do an overlay of a rock and roller coaster into Star Wars. Uh, they I'm do. Good. Um, I'm good. They're supposed to have. A uh, special display of Star Wars Galaxy Far, Far Away, which is the fashion stage show that they do at Hollywood Studios. And a special uh, Galactic and, Spectacular. Yes, and they're going to have different elements incorporated into it just for Galactic Nights that you can only experience that evening, as well as meet and greets with Ewoks and... And whereas the, the, April, the event in Death April... Troopers and stuff. The event in April, Thank the you. Q&A panel was with uh, actors. Um, obviously, they could still have an actor Q&A panel in December, but we don't know who the actors are. But they did reveal that a Q&A panel will be about the making of Galaxy's Edge and a behind-the-scenes look at the creation. Sponsored by Samsung? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's her joke. That was so, so, yeah, yeah it's coming. I forget how much the tickets are. Um, $129 oh, for adults so, and $124 well, for kids. So you expect me to pay 
hundred thirty dollars for Star Wars weekends, and then Light. thirty dollars for, for yeah. a sampler lanyard if you want to eat. Oh come on, man! Oh, I hate you, Disney. <laughs> or like, oh get right. out of here! All right, so I'm going to ask you a couple of dumb questions because I don't know the answers. All okay. right, when you're going into this, you know, especially themed event, is the entire park open? Yes. Only to you. If but you have yeah, a but I mean, like, you yes, can all go, the attractions. You can are go open. to Muppets if you want to. Yes. All right. Yes. There's no meet and greets with the actors. No, wow. not the actors, but you you will get like character meet and greets. Like you they, they, they say here, Ray? the Death Troopers, uh, roaming droids, Ewoks, and other so photos. characters that you won't get any other time. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. Because because with the Death be Troopers, to... they walk around. It's hard yeah. to the stop them. The only time you can interact with them is if they're walking around before and after Galaxy yeah. Far Far Away. Oh, Trinity, you got on. a question? What are you asking? Actually, I stopped. We wouldn't be able to like meet her. She wasn't there in the April event. She's no. only here for certain things. Last the, time she was here was for um, she did a signing celebration. The, the no, big, she did a book signing. The big actor too. that was at the April event was Alan Tujic, who was um, K two S O man and everything else. Yeah. yeah, but but no meet and greet. No meet. No, so you're paying no, 100, 100, 100, no meet and greets. Oh, no man. photo ops. That's a lot. You of get money. special Noodle. photo opportunities though. They but have, like, what? So you go to like backdrops. And things you're like, like how things. they had at celebration where they had like the trash compactor and then Emperor Palpatine's like chair and everything else. You'll have stuff like that. Not so scary. Costs what? A hundred dollars, give or take. Give or take, yeah. You're getting meet and greets with all these extra characters. <laughs> I, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. You're Basically. getting. It's, uh, it's all... not the best valued event. Yeah, it's it's for well, what... a park that's a quarter of the size. Yeah, and there's nothing there right now. Right. Everything's closed. I gotta imagine that the event will be a lot better once Star Wars Land opens. Thank you, and Mike. They can incorporate that. Yeah. I will pay the money, but I guarantee it'll go up to like two hundred twenty-nine dollars when Star Wars Land opens because. That park is going to be a walking mass of bodies for the next five years when it opens. Like, you won't be able to walk around it at all. The lines will be longer than Flight of Passage. Flight of Passage will go down to 30 minutes because everyone's going to be in Star Wars land. People will pay through the nose to get into that park without the weights. And I think this is just a feeler for that. Yeah, I wish there was more to offer. but I wish it, it was more than one night. Here's because my, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you miss the celebrities. Exactly. It's only one night. That's it, being it was only, only one night in night. April, and it's only going to be one night in December. Here's oh, my okay. question for Matt, you. My, thank you, Mike, for being on my side. <laughs> the price tag is $129. Oh. What would they need to add? Jesus. I know it hurts you. What would they need to add to make that price worth it to you? Meet and greet? Yeah. If they do some With sort the of actors? Like, yes. It, some, even though if, well, if they're I went Peter to, Mayhew. Yeah, I, I mean, went to I, Star Wars weekends and yes. got... Four, you could have, what, four or five different actors in one part. Billy, Will- Billy D. Williams, dog. You could meet him. I like, guarantee you, though, if they were to do meet and greets, it would be a, a, it would a be higher an price ticket. You like an add on to the regular ticket. But, why, but, it, but it was included with your admission. Your regular because in the then, day. Because then the lines would be. Because the event's only five hours long. Say, all right, so say you, ha- you pay $130 and you're guaranteed, say, five celebrities come. You have one celebrity that you're able to meet. You yeah. just get a, you get you know whatever ticket, you, you, you can choose you yeah. know who it is when you're buying your ticket. So you, you like get to the park earlier in the day to pick up your ticket for the whether it be that want. or when you're buying your ticket you you select somebody you know what whatever's available. And so that's whoever, good. And that's then, good. So yeah. whoever yeah. buys yeah. the tickets first yeah. as soon as they go on sale get yeah. the chance to meet. That's a great you know, idea. Whether it be you know, I, you know something to to boost up you know the reason yeah. for that price whether it be Warwick Davis or yeah. Alan Tudyk whoever it could be you know Joe Schmo Stormtrooper number five. Right. At least you're getting something out of it. I was I was at the one in April. I got I experienced it in person, um, and and you know there's enough there's enough to do to, that lasts me the five hours. I was busy the whole time, and I I, I enjoyed it. Um, all right, no, okay, all right. I'm gonna well, before you go on. Okay, go. I'm gonna ask a question. Go. Yes, if you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Yes. Where did you pay your own money, or was it a media pass? It was not a media pass where Disney invited us. Okay, but it was paid for. Matt paid for. Would my would you have paid 130 dollars to go to this? If no. you had, if all right, no, exactly, that that's what I'm saying. Okay, I was lu- I was lucky that Matt paid for my ticket in April, and I'm lucky that he is, that I'm going to the one in December. Okay, um, but yeah, it's it's hard. It's really hard to justify that price. Yeah, but even it with really is. but even with a celebrity, to, for me to pay 130 dollars and not meet that celebrity, it has to be like when I like when Mark Hamill showed up. I was at that park three hours before, you know, whatever because yeah. it's Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has to be like a Mark Hamill. As well, yeah, yeah, and I was character. just you know, joking, saying like it'd be oh, Stormtrooper no, yeah, yeah. or whatever. But, but still, like even for me, like come on, like no, no offense, Adam. 
two dick or whatever. But like, come on, that's your and you're not. I mean, I'm not able. To and they, they like, did the same thing like a Star Wars weekends where they had them in the in the cars going down the street to yeah, the stage. Oh, okay. exact See, same I would thing. want like a uh, music of Pixar live, but Star yes! Wars. or that's I would Ooh, want yeah. something like that. I would want a meet and greet with Phasma or Ray or like these characters and that the you thing. never get to interact mm. with. And not and, just the Death Troopers or the ones that can't talk. Like I want a VO. Phasma meet and greet where she and, tells me that my and just like with Star Wars Week, yeah. like a Star Wars Weekend, they had the Disney characters out in their Star Wars costumes meet mm-hmm. and greet, but they didn't have That'll that. That'll never in April. happen again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, which sucks. Um, but the April event is where they debuted Ray in the in that Daily Stage yeah. show. That's mm-hmm. where she made her debut. She looks amazing, she not by the way. Really? Yet. I don't. Get I don't know that. why. I don't understand why? that. You but could introduce that. I know. And make I know. There's a, a lot of issues nights. with rights with actors. They have to sign away their right for their character. I know for the longest time. Uh, my my wife used to be good friends with Turk at Animal Kingdom, and whenever you would see Turk, there was no photo pass with with Turk. You had to take your own photos because apparently Rosie O'Donnell never agreed to let it Disney would... take photos of the character she voiced. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. But it's an it's animated like, character. It, it, it's the, it's still the voice it uses actors. Their vo- voice That's... likeness. It's like with uh, Johnny Depp and Captain Jack Sparrow. He does not have any kind of photo pass people other than the Equity Show where the kids learn how to fight with swords. That's During the Halloween that, the parties, you have to take your own photos. He has a character attendant, and that's it, because his likeness and his character persona are owned by Johnny Depp. That's yeah. the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Man. Yeah. Con- contracts are weird. But it's yeah. the same I'm sure, thing I'm sure with Daisy Bert Ridley would Mary be like, more than happy to too? do it, but I don't know if they've even asked her yeah. about it. Thank God I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> so I heard a rumor that it was written into their contracts after episode seven. So... Mm-hmm. I want a Finn meet and greet. Fight yeah. me. I want that. But I like I like Mike's idea. If I'm if I'm gonna go and pay $130, I want a meet and greet and I'll meet one person and I get to choose that style. It could yeah. be a lottery the best system too. Ever. It could then be I'd, included with your ticket. Right. And even and I pay I pay the hundred thirty for that. And it, 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 you were saying about the food. The, that food thing's drive me crazy too. Like you go to yeah. DVC events and you're at least getting free premium bars and yes. you know, and stuff like that. Why not? Yes, they did the same thing Something at the after hours event with Magic Kingdom. Remember when they they started doing where you paid oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, after yeah. hours and yeah. there was free Cokes and free yeah. premium bars. Why, why, at least something like that. That's a man, that has a lot of See, money. I would at say, least with not so scary, I'm getting a backpack full of candy. You know, yeah. I, I can eat that as I'm going through. I would yes. say include the sampler lanyard with the hundred and thirty dollars, knock the base ticket get priced down to a hundred so that way you get in yeah. for a hundred dollars see that's yeah. not bad but you get the sampler lanyard for 130 okay something. how about that something. something i don't know like even like like uh what, what's, what's that christmas thing called in magic kingdom I don't mickey's, mickey's very, very merry christmas, christmas, christmas party. party uh you get free cookies and, and hot, hot chocolate. chocolate cookies at least give me hot chocolate give me some cookies they have like some free blue milk. yeah, give, yeah. Some, give me blue milk and okay. those peanut butter darth vader cupcakes yep. those things are amazing or <laughs> just even regular sugar cookies Devil's i don't advocate care here Star Wars fans will pay that money to go. That's yep. see, that is the ugliest part. And the part. April event, I've, from what I heard, sold out. It, yes. it, 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 it took a while, but it sold out. And people will pay to go to these things. So why can't Disney uh, well, try as I much as they I, want? This is early. We, we still don't know all the de- every detail about this event. But the, I guarantee you there's going to be something related to Last Jedi. Because this, this, this event is the day after that movie's released. Well, what they, if they have a screening? Well, they, we don't know if they're doing that. They did what? that for when, when uh, Force Awakens because it was like especially. But it was, it was announced by this time yeah. in twenty in, in that year because you went that, that year. Yeah, I went it to was that. it was like it was, a special thing you, you bought. It was like seventy five something was, like that dollars. Was, but you, you saw the movie at Disney Springs. Yeah, like ahead of time, time like before yeah. anybody else got to you see had, it. You, and then you went over guaranteed to see the movie at Disney Springs early, and then after that, you busted over at midnight to Hollywood Studios for a special like three four hour party to celebrate the release of the. How movie. How much is that? It, it was it, cheaper than yeah, this event. She, I'm thinking it was I'm like, in. Well, <laughs> that's so what they in. did. Because we, we don't know if they're going to do it this year. That's a risk you and have then, to take with buying this ticket. And that's where they debut Galactic Nights or what, what, what the heck they, they Didn't they debut it then night, that night too? No, it was the Galactic Force? Spectacular? Yeah. I thought they did. I don't, I th- I don't remember. Because that's when they did the Wraith or the, the, the Phasma thing, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Phasma was on top of, yeah, of, was, of, of the old idol building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I thought so. And then that's when they debuted that's the Rock and Roller Coaster. That's where they debuted the Star Wars Rock and Roller Coaster, yeah. Really? Yeah. Because it was cool because it was the host that do you had a red car. Carpet down Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. and yeah. it was awesome. Oh, and I wanted, to, I wanted to go, but I just didn't have the extra money for it. And I was, oh. that's why I was living vicariously through Banks because he actually filmed you know, the the ride through of uh, Rock and Roller Coaster. And you're hearing the 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 host from Star Wars Weekends, and they're doing the whole yo know, uh, Steven Tyler yo. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, you know, no, I mean, not doing that. But, you know, know. The, 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 the story behind the rock, the story behind Rock and Roller Coaster Star Wars edition, at least for the Force Awakens premiere party, mm. was that you are trying to get to, to the, the to the world premiere yeah. of Star Wars Force Awakens in Hollywood, and you have to zip through Hollywood. That's, which I'm that's, like, that makes so, so much sense. It's yeah. a permanent overlay. Yeah, but you're getting the music, you know, duh, 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 and, and it's, it's a specially yeah. edited version of the music for that coaster yeah. to so sync, sync up perfectly. Man, it's great. so that's something you have to think about if. Because the fans will pay for it to go, so that's why it's that high of a price. Yeah, hate to be the bad guy, but Boo. maybe Boo they'll add girl. more. Like I said yeah. with the Christmas stuff, if you want it to be better, you need to go. But I'm not paying 130 dollars. Hey Amen. I'm a, I'm on Team Mike on this one. <laughs> Normally he wants to ruin everything. <laughs> Me in this case, I'm, I'm in on the his side. Seat man. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I'm not paying. Right. Now if Daisy dollars. Ridley was there, I'll pay. <laughs> I don't even have to. If you would like to see (laughs) coverage, you can follow us on on at attractions during this event because we will provide you videos and photos. I would go. Uh, No, honestly, email correspondent. Oh, look at that! See what she's doing. (laughs) But if Daisy really was there. I feel like she would. Even if you don't have to meet her, or if you don't get to meet her, just to stare at her from afar. Daisy really with like her her hair now. That voice. Oh my God! Can we move on? Oh my gosh! Speaking of moving on, um, we gotta end the show, guys. Yeah, we're at an hour. It's getting late, y'all. I got um, a date. I got, I got, I got a date with Destiny too. <laughs> Since we weren't invited to, Since it. we weren't invited. Oh my God! <laughs> even though I got movie pass, that's um, okay. So really quick, uh, go around the board. Uh, where can anybody find you uh, on social media? For me, you can find me at Brittany Tuttle, B R I T T A N I T U T T L E, minus wow. that sneeze that just happened. What just happened? On Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, you can also find Early Night Live at Early Night Live on Twitter. How do you spell and that? We, uh, <laughs> Don't spell that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My name's spelled different. That's why I spelled it. Okay. You can find us on the Attractions Magazine YouTube channel every Thursday Pow, at 6 p.m. Eastern. Come watch, interact with us. Make Number some one jokes. theme park live stream. Number in the one world. theme park live stream in the world. Don't forget it. Next. Isn't Didi going to be on the, the show soon? I, w- I want Didi on an HHN episode. That is my dream. Is All right. That can happen. It'll happen. I want it to happen. Uh, so. Banks, what about you? Where can anybody follow you? I'm yeah. sure they already are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Personally, uh, Twitter at Banks Lee, uh, Instagram at Disney Goofball, um, Facebook Banks Lee, and then, of course, all the attraction socials is where my work stuff is. And, of course, you can follow or watch the show. The show every Thursday show. at attractionsmagazine.com. And on YouTube.com slash Attractions Magazine. There you go. The show. Very good. Yes. Usually in the morning. Deeds. The best thing on Thursdays is the show. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> We're shooting um, some shots. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> this is my you could uh, follow me on all types of social media except Facebook, uh, Black Demons Prime, B-L-A-K-T-I-M-U-S, Prime. And... Uh, How do you spell Prime? <laughs> <laughs> P R I M E, except on PSN because we got a faker out there. Faker. So it's P R one N E. Lord. Prime. Number one. Um, you said P R one N E. Yeah. Prime. O M E. Did you really? I didn't even catch it. I didn't even catch it. Roasted. Man. Brittany uh, one, DD zero. Well. <laughs> Oh, let me let me finish because we're gonna get out of here. Okay. All right. So if you want to follow the podcast on uh, Twitter, it is at Attractions EXP, and of course you can follow us on Twitch. It's a uh, Twitch TV slash Expansion Drive. Uh, the hurricane's over, so we're gonna start streaming again soon. Maybe we even do some Destiny uh, tonight, an hour from now. Yeah. Um. What else? Uh, what else we got? Uh. uh- MEI Travel? Yes, well, yes. That, that too. I thought someone was going to say something else. Um, if you want to uh, want to get a free quote from MEITravel.com, uh, they'll help you out with uh, your cruises. Uh, go to Mouse Fan Travel, they'll yeah. help you with Disney. Hey. And UniversalFanTravel.com, help with you some Universal. Travel. And Volcano we, Bay. We love MEI Travel. They're our sponsor of the show as well. Oh, oh friendship. Yay. Hey. MEI Travel will help you get in Volcano Bay because that's really hard. Is there really a nightlife uh, sponsor? We don't have a sponsor. Oh, okay. Okay. No, Just make sure. So, a sponsor <laughs> people over here. Oh we'll, we'll go on a date. Sponsor people date. Oh, my God. Can we finish this up so I can go on my date? <laughs> yes. Hey, we have to... Remember the thing I did on Zelda? That oh, we, uh, oh God. That So, there's a story that happened in Destiny 2. <laughs> I'm um, out of here. Uh, but, guys, uh, as always, thank you for watching. And thanks to everybody that reached out to us on uh, Twitter and Instagram and everything else that make sure that we we're okay over the, uh, the hurricane. It is much appreciated. You guys have no idea, seriously. Um, but, uh, as usual, from the good brothers and the good sister, too sweet. Too sweet. sweet.